it on up. All right, let's do this thing, guys. So first things first, <laughs> Matt said, two for show, bring the nugs. Absolutely, golden nugs coming through. Uh, so first things first, anti-distraction zone. Now, you guys, you guys have already sacrificed your holiday, right, your half day here today to be with me. So that is a, a huge honor. Guys, everything, right, everyone talks about the 80-20 rule. I like to talk about the 99-1 rule, right, because you, you just sacrifice, you're going to sacrifice some time to be with me on this webinar, right? Well, you got to pay attention, right? You have to close down Facebook. You have to turn over your phone. I'm actually guilty of this too. Since we've been here, I already got a bunch of notifications, right? So I am going to turn off my phone. I am putting it down, face down, because I respect you guys, and I want to make sure that you get everything you need here today to actually launch this business. Uh, guys, I do not give webinars that are like, here's what's cool, and here's why you should buy things from me. Uh, we are going to give you guys the entire roadmap here today. There are people that have made millions of dollars, and I am not kidding. I just met one a couple weeks ago. There's people who have made millions of dollars off of the free presentation you are about to see. So please do not underestimate the value of this presentation. And, you know, this isn't just important to me, guys. You raised your hand and told me it's important for you to learn how to run this business and use it to transform your life. So let's get serious about your life and your business for just a couple hours here, and let's enter into the anti-distraction zone. Guys, I am going to move blazing fast, right? I am a younger guy. I'm a fast talker, as you can see, and I got a lot of things that I want to get out to you guys in a limited amount of time here today. So I am going to move fast. Uh, I am not going to be able to go back and re, you know, tell you things again. Everything I say today, I'm saying one time and you better be paying attention. So anti-distraction zone, let's get into it. Guys, if you're on Facebook, you know, what are we doing? Like this isn't how we build businesses. You, you don't build your business on Facebook or text messaging or looking at the news. You build your business by sacrificing little bits of time for transformative results. So let's do that right now. First things first, we have to talk about e-commerce, right? This is a, a market that is just exploding. Literally, guys, you know, the economy collapsed in 2007, 2008. Since then, e-commerce is the economy, right? The growth of the economy right now is being led by e-commerce, specifically by Amazon, which I'm sure you guys have heard lots about in the last five years, right? It's because Amazon is literally one of the fastest growing companies in human history, and uh, it's, it's literally like the biggest opportunity since the internet came out and you could build a website well now there's e-commerce and it's an even bigger opportunity than the original dot-com boom right so this is just outrageous outrageous and I'm gonna show you guys just how crazy this market is right Amazon stock since 2008 is up Jesus I mean this this slides out of date now let's go bring it up right since 2008 this is a company that has gone up 2,418%, guys. Um, if you went back in time to the Great Depression and you could only invest in one thing, you could invest in houses, if you could invest in uh, General Electric, all of them, the best investment in the U.S. history is Amazon stock. This company is growing so quickly and creating so much disruption and changing the world in such profound ways that it is up 2,400% in just a few years. So I mean guys, this is uh, literally the fastest growing like companies that are worth 300 billion dollars shouldn't be doubling, right? Year after year. This is crazy amounts of growth. Uh since last December, Amazon is twice as big as it was last December. Guys, this year in 2017, Amazon is projected to double its sales again. Double its sales again. So it's just absolutely outrageous. And guys, what what are we really trying to get in the way of, right? Because I'm not saying like Amazon, you know, go work for Amazon, right? What I'm saying is that Amazon right now, uh, I think it's about 54% of Amazon sales come from third-party sellers, right? So let me say that again. 54% of Amazon's hundreds of billions of dollars of sales are coming from third-party sellers like you and me. So that's the pie we want to take a hold of, right? When, when Amazon's doubling in size every year and over half of those sales are going to third-party sellers like us, that is the pie we want, right? That is our piece of the pie, and that's what you're trying to reach out and grab here today. So, so that's what it's all about, right? E-commerce fever, right? Even outside of Amazon, we see just everything is blowing up. 
at, look, at, look at Alibaba, guys. The largest company to ever go public in the United States, the largest company to ever go public on the U.S. stock market was a Chinese e-commerce company called Alibaba. It wasn't, it wasn't Exxon Mobil. It wasn't General Electric. It wasn't GM. It was Alibaba, a Chinese e-commerce company. So this is how big the e-commerce revolution is that we are living through right now, guys. This is what will define uh, this decade, really. This decade will be defined by e-commerce and Amazon. And, and again, it's up to you. Like You are sitting in 1997 when the, when the internet is just starting. That's where you're at right now for e-commerce. So it's up to you if you want to be you know, five years from now, if you want to be sitting at a bar with the same old job saying, Oh, you know, I had an, I, a, an idea for e-commerce once. Or you can actually take a extremely small risk with an extreme amount of upside and, and just make it happen now because the opportunity is here. This company is growing. Guys, do you want to know how, how much room is left for growth in this market, right? Let's look at total, uh, let's see, e-commerce sales as percentage of total retail sales in this country, right? So, <laughs> This is how big e-commerce is going to be, guys. Even today, you guys all know about e-commerce. I bet you there's a lot of people on this call right now that are thinking, I'm probably too late to the game, right? E-commerce is, I'm too late. Everyone that's going to make money has already made money, and now it's saturated, right? Well, guys, let me show you how unsaturated this market is. In Q1 2017, so just a few months ago, uh, e-commerce accounted for, let me follow this line, 8.5% of retail sales, okay? I don't know what your thoughts are on this, but I think in like 20 years, this is going to be closer to about 90%, right? The future is e-commerce. Retail is dead, right? No one's going out there to invest in malls right now. Uh, retail is gone, but it's, gonna, it's a trillion dollar market, right? It is going to take time for those trillions of dollars to filter down into e-commerce. It's going to take 20, 30 years. So guys, again, E-commerce will define generations because this is a massive transition of the economy. Uh, again, right now, I can't make this up, guys. This is from the Census Bureau, right? Right now, e-commerce only accounts for 8.5% of retail sales in this country. So there is so much more room left in this market, right? You are getting in on the ground level. And, and guys, this is a market where you snooze, you lose, you lose, right? It is so easy to start these businesses and so low cost right now that people are flooding into it. So yeah, if you wait five years, it's going to be too late. But right now, you guys are in on the ground level. E-commerce only accounts for 8.5% of retail sales, guys. That's how big this is going to be. And this is in the United States. In the world, e-commerce probably accounts for about 1%, right? So e-commerce, as big as it is right now, it is going to double and double and double and double time and time again. Uh, pretty much for our entire lifetimes, we will see e-commerce just destroy retail and slowly siphon out those, those trillions of dollars of sales. Again, that is the pie we are going to take advantage of here today. So super quick dabble into my story. Uh, again, nobody here came to hear about me, <laughs> so I'm going to run through this as quick as I can. Um, I do have some really valuable tidbits in here, though. Guys, a lot of the mistakes that new e-commerce entrepreneurs make are just really easy to avoid. So I'm going to show you some of my bad products. I'm going to show you some of my good products, and that's going to start to set the tone for some of the pitfalls you want to avoid and things like that. Um, I got one slide here that's going to go into my backstory, and then we'll get back into the nitty-gritty. So super quick dabble into my story. Um, I was actually born to a, a, a very poor family in Chicago. My parents were 17 years old when they had me, so public aid, all that fun stuff. But by the time I was seven years old, my parents had taken this huge risk, and they're like 23, 24 at the time, took this huge risk and just stopped everything they were doing and started their own company. This was in 1997. So again, right, right in the dot-com boom, right? So, uh, so they started a company. By the time I was nine years old, just a few short years later, uh, they actually sold that company at the height of the dot-com boom for just a crazy amount of money, right? So I saw from a very early age this, this kind of rags-to-riches power of entrepreneurship. And I knew from the time I was 10 years old, I knew that this was what I was going to do with my life. It, it did make sense to me to, to go out to school for 10 you – know, I was 10 years old at the time. So what, I'm supposed to stay in school for 12 years before I actually start my life? I thought the whole thing was ridiculous. 
So, so I said, you know what? My parents are paying for me right now because I'm like 10 years old. Um, so I just need to figure out how to be a businessman, a business person by the time I am 18. If I can figure this all out by the time I'm 18, then I don't have to go to college. I don't have to get a job and I can do whatever I want to do. So, so that was kind of like why I became an entrepreneur was I, I just did not understand school and what the hell the story was there. Uh, I knew how to be an entrepreneur. Like I saw it happen already and I knew that school wasn't going to do it for me. There's no training that can make you an entrepreneur. You just got to go out there and, you know, pardon the language, but we're getting laid back here today. You just got to go out there and fucking do it, right? And that's what no one ever does. So I started trying all these different get rich quick schemes, right? I was, at this time, I'm like 11, 12 years old, right? So trying all these different things, skipping school all the time, just, again, if I can figure out how to make money online by the time I'm 18, then I don't have to go to college and I don't have to get a job. And that's what it was all about for me. So uh, tons and tons of failures, right? When you're a... 12-year-old uh, kid trying to start a business, it turns out nobody wants to buy things from you. So I tried, you know, marketing, consulting, and just all these different things, and uh, nothing really worked. Affiliate marketing, nothing really worked. Um, I would be walking into restaurants trying to sell them marketing services as a 12-year-old kid, and I would pretty much get laughed out. They would say, well, that's cute, but I'm not going to buy anything from you. So I had no idea what I was doing, no business skills, no business connections. All I knew was that I was going to be an entrepreneur. There was never any other option in my mind. That was it. That was the only life I saw, right? Entrepreneurship is awesome, right? I can wake up every day, pick what I want to work on. How am I going to make the biggest impact in the world today? And then I can go fucking do it, right? Whereas like every other option to me just seems like a slow grind to the day you die. And I just wasn't into it. This seems like the only way to live. So how I got into importing an e-commerce was uh, actually through my dad. And my dad went out one day. He, uh, he, he went to buy a new car, so like big, big accomplishment for him, big day and everything. But he was talking to the car dealer, and the car dealer told him about this kid that came in the day before and bought a brand new car, a uh, $100,000 Mercedes cash, just wrote a check for it out the door. Kid obviously wasn't uh, saving his money really well, but, but he was spending it well. And, um, and so obviously the car dealer asked this kid, like, what the hell is going on, right? I'm a car dealer and you're making, like, how are you affording this car? 17-year-old um, kid. And the kid basically said, listen, man, I don't know what's going on, but I started importing counterfeit hair straighteners a few months ago. I'm selling them on eBay and I'm making more money than I know what to do with. So my dad came home after hearing this story, knocked on my door and pretty much said, hey, I can't get you to go to school. So at least I'll know that you're working on something that's working for someone else. Um, so that's how I got into importing an e-commerce. And, um, and just to show you guys too, uh, this is a picture of me when I first got into the whole thing. Uh, so, so I don't know what I was thinking from a fashion perspective, uh, but, but guys, uh, if anyone thinks that they can't do this business, like this is me when I figured it out. When I was making, I was making more money than my, my freaking teachers dressed like this. How offensive is that? There's, there's a teacher here on the call right now. How pissed would you be if this kid's come to your class every day, or I'm sorry, come to your class like two days a week and dressed like this and, and just having the time of his life? Because I was making money hand over fist with, uh, with counterfeits at that time. So this is how I figured it out. Someone said, check out that deep V. Guys, don't, don't tell anyone this, but I'm pretty sure that's a girl shirt. I don't know what happened that day, but I'm pretty sure that's gothic pants and a girl shirt. What the hell this guy's doing? I don't know. He's rocking on, though. He's rocking on. So, uh, so this, this is me when I figured it all out, guys. When I cracked the code and actually started making money online, this is what it was at. And, guys, I love this business because why I could make money in this as a kid was because it wasn't dependent on me and my image, right? Uh, a lot of businesses, you have to have prior success. You have to have a resume, so to speak, uh, for people to take you seriously. E-commerce is not like that. It is so easy to get started from scratch in e-commerce because you, your reputation is your products and the positioning of your products and the branding of your products, right? And that's what we're going to talk about here today is how to launch these products and do this. Hector said, let's get to the effing point. Some of us are running a business already. Heck, so everybody here on the call, if, if you are like Hector and not getting value out of this yet, you should probably just leave, right? Like, guys, give me a one in the question box. Is in, we have not even gotten into the presentation. Give me a one in the question box if you've already found some really valuable tidbits to go out there and use. Yeah, one, Chris, Riyadh, Tiffany. 
All right, yeah, so Hector, as much as I love you, man, you, you might be in the wrong place. You might be in the wrong place. So, um, so getting back to it, though, not letting Hector derail us. Um, we still love you, Hector. But uh, so, so this is me when I figured it all out, right? Embarrassing, but, but that's, again, it's not complex. This is an easier business than most other businesses, again, because you can, your reputation is dependent on how you're positioning your products and your product line. So I just love this business. My first moneymaker is not something I'm super proud of, but it is, I do want to be honest with you guys. Uh, counterfeits is how I got my start, right? 13 years old, counterfeits, bam, making tons of money with them. Now, this is back in like 2003. I wouldn't recommend doing counterfeits now. Uh, the rollout strategy I'd recommend now is what I'm going to go over in a second here. But, but you got to start somewhere. And for me, it was the counterfeits. I started with Chanel purses, went on to like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, all this other stuff. Uh, my biggest moneymaker was these fake P90Xs. I would get these P90Xs. Oh, and Hector said I didn't mean it that way. No worries. No, Hector, you're, you're good, man. I, just, I was just screwing with you too. Um, so these P90Xs, though, I was getting these from the actual P90X factory in China for four bucks a box, the actual factory. And then we'd bring these things over and sell them on Amazon, eBay, in person, Craigslist, and we'd make like 100 bucks minimum per box. So really making good money with this. And it worked for, you know, a year or two, maybe, yeah, about a year, uh, maybe 15 months-ish. And then eventually I got the cease and desist. And for anyone who doesn't know what a cease and desist is, a cease and desist, like if you're selling fake Nike stuff and Nike finds out, they're going to send you a cease and desist. And it's basically going to say, stop selling fake Nike stuff or else we're going to sue you into bankruptcy. So luckily I was smart enough to listen and I stopped selling all my counterfeits at that time. Still have a couple uh, right behind this wall in my garage. I have a few counterfeits still, but um, but but I knew I could actually make money online, and that's what the big breakthrough was for me, right? The reason why the counterfeits, why I mention them, is because this was the breakthrough. Um, a lot of people that aren't making money for themselves or online or however you want to phrase it, people that aren't making money for themselves yet, the the first big breakthrough is just seeing that it's possible, right? And that's what happened for me with the counterfeits is I said, man, I, I can finally freaking do it, right? I know I can do it. Uh, I know I can not do the traditional road of success. I don't have to go to school. I don't have to get a college degree. I don't have to get a job. I can actually build a business on my own. So at this point, I said, you know, shit. Uh, my, my money, my whole income flow just got cut off. I'm out of the counterfeits. I'm still living under my parents' roof and everything, so I didn't have bills or anything. And I said, man, I got I to gotta take the money I just made from counterfeits and go legit as soon as I can, right? Because I knew the counterfeits couldn't sell those, uh, but, but legitimate products, that's where I wanted to go into. Because, again, I was like 14 at this time, uh, maybe 15. And, um, and I knew that e-commerce was the place for me. Not only was it blowing up, just getting bigger and bigger every single day, um, but also, again, I could sell my products. It wasn't that I had to be there walking into every you know, customer and selling them. I had a sales listing that sold customers day in and day out on its own, right? So it's passive income. So I said, man, I got to go legit. Hundreds of hours of research. You know, I thought, okay, I'm already selling these products. I'm already, I'm already an e-commerce master. How hard could it be? So hundreds and hundreds of hours of research. Um, this is where I really started skipping school a lot. Um, if you go talk to anyone I went to high school with, I was known as like the bad kid because I would just kind of show up sometimes when I had to, but I wasn't really into any of it. Had like, you know, I had friends and stuff, but I wasn't doing this whole college or this whole, this whole school thing, right? So skipping just tons and tons of school trying to build this business. Um, tapped into every secret method I could find, right? I was literally like, there was no one out there doing these webinars when I got started, right? I had to figure all of this out on my own. How do I ship products from China? How is there inspections and all these different things I had to figure out on my own through losing money most of the time. You guys are, again, lucky. There's, there's this webinar. You got so many different people that will show you how to model their success now. Um, but back then, there was nobody to model. It was, it was like e-commerce was new. It was fresh. It was the wild, wild west. And, um, and I tried everything I possibly could. Again, this is where I was really, really missing a lot of school. Oriana said, what do you think about, or I'm sorry, uh, we'll, we'll get your question too, Oriana, but uh, Rubble said, uh, have you ever felt leaving education was a mistake? Not at all. Not at all. You know, I, obviously I, I help lots and lots of people start businesses now. Um, the people that have the, the toughest time starting a business 
and this is a hundred percent I have coached thousands of people now and I see this so many times the more education you have and the more you're you're into that education the more you depend on that education the harder it will be for you to start a business and I see that time and time again you know we see doctorates and PhDs come in um, and, and you know be our coaching clients and they just can't do it they just don't they've lost the ability to risk take they've lost the ability to critically think um, so so I absolutely don't regret uh, missing as much school as I possibly could you know I, I think if anything I would try to miss more school if I could do it over again um, Rubel said uh, did your family allow you to start at a young age yeah, as Steve said in the question box, um, they were encouraged, like, listen, my parents were entrepreneurs, so I think once I became an entrepreneur, they were like, shit, like, we did not want this to happen at 13 years old. We were talking, like, let's send them off to an Ivy, like, my parents wanted me to go to an Ivy League school, and it was, like, fully paid for, no debt, nothing, and I still think it's a horrible decision. The people that are taking on debt for this thing, I mean, my God, this is the new poor, are people with student loan debt. That have no skills. It's it's a so I definitely do not uh, regret missing lots and lots of school. I, if anything, I would miss more school. But getting back into it, because Hector's going to yell at us soon. Um, so mistakes and setbacks. Tons of mistakes and setbacks along the way, right? Tons and tons of them. So I'm going to show you a few of my bad products here. I'm going to show you a few of my good products in a second. But uh, let me show you some bad products first, and let me show you why they are bad products. Because, again, these are mistakes that almost every new entrepreneur makes. Hector gave me a smile. I'm loving Hector now. Um, so first bad product I had were these patio furniture sets. Uh, the reason they were a bad pro product is the more important thing here, right? So, guys, what you will find when you see any type of product that is, let's say, over five pounds, any product that's over five pounds you need shipping discounts to sell them profitably, right? Today, I sell products that are 40 pounds, 50 pounds, single product, right? We'll send boxes out that are hundreds of pounds. The difference is now I have a 65% discount on all major shipping companies, right? So it is so cheap for me to ship around uh, these heavy products. Back in the day, I did not have those shipping discounts. Uh, you can't do products that are over five pounds for your first product. That's just my, my general rule of thumb. If you are just getting started in this business, start with products that are under five pounds, preferably products that are under three pounds. Uh, the lighter, the better, and the, the less bulky, the better too, right? We don't want like a massive patio furniture set we have to ship around. That's going to be expensive. That's going to be risky, right? What happens if one of your patio furniture sets breaks in shipping? That's what happened to me, and I had to you know, not only ship this product from China to me to my customer, but that returned set, I had to get that back and send them a new one. So um, anytime you have a product that's really heavy or bulky or expensive to ship, you're going to run into this issue where all of your profit's going to go into shipping. So don't do heavy products until you have shipping discounts with UPS, FedEx, DHL, all the big boys, right? So, um, so don't worry about heavy products until you're already up and running. Uh, after that, I said, man, patio furniture sets suck. I don't want to do anything that has any weight to it again. So I found these mattress sheets, and I said, all right, these things are, these things are not heavy, right? Um, and TJ, yeah, I know we have a couple PhD people in here. Listen, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Please do, because... Uh, uh, yeah, prove me wrong. Do it. Um, so the mattress sheets were awesome. These I sold these for a really profitable price and everything. And the problem with these was I didn't validate them correctly. What do I mean when I say validate a product, right? Well, the first thing I like to do before I go out and buy like a hundred units of some product, I like to just buy you know ten, twenty-five units and sell those to real customers, even if you have to discount it, whatever you need to do. But what I did with these uh, mattress sheets is I tested them myself. And that's what most new e-commerce entrepreneurs do. And again, this is why it's a very common pitfall. When you're first starting your e-commerce business, your instinct is to just test your product out yourself. But the problem I discovered is that you don't have the same expectations on your product as a paying customer would, right? So what I, what I do now, again, is sell 10 to 25 units to customers first to see what they think of the product. And if they like the product, then I'll go buy more. And then I can start really selling them and really making money, right? But these things, uh, I bought a ton of these and, and tested them myself. And I sold them because I, I thought they were okay, right? To test them, I just like spread them out on my bed and I rolled around on them. 16-year-old testing sheets, right? 
Um, I, it didn't occur to me that people wash sheets. Um, so, so when my customers got these and actually washed the sheets, the colors would just go everywhere and ruin everything else in the washer with it. So bad product because I didn't test it properly. Would have been a good product, but I did not test it properly, and, and so it was a bad one. After this, I went into Yes We Cannabis shirts. Uh, yes We Cannabis shirts. This was in 2006, 2007, right when Obama was uh, breaking onto the scene. And, uh, and when Obama was running for office, we said, man, Yes We Cannabis shirts. Has there ever been a better business, right? You got the iPhone or you got the Yes We Cannabis shirt? Yes We Cannabis shirt. So we, we straight up printed a thousand of these things because that's how smart we are, right? We just went straight in and did a thousand units of this shirt because I got a good price on it, right? To do like a hundred shirts, it would have cost me like eight bucks a shirt. To do a thousand shirts, it was like four fifty a shirt. So I got suckered into the volume and I, I grew way too quick, quickly with this, way too quickly, right? So this is such a common mistake, not only in this business, but any physical product business you'll see people growing at the wrong rate. Uh, the rate of growth that we recommend, and guys, write this down. This is one of those gold nugs from uh, whoever, whoever said that earlier. So gold nug here. Um, the right way to grow this type of business is start with 10 to 50 products, right? That's your first order is 10 to 50 products. You, you don't want to order 1,000 units right off the bat, right? Because then you're going to sink all of your money into inventory and you're gonna have no money left over to actually sell the product. And that's what we did with this, right? So again, the, the right way to grow this business is start with 10 to 25 products, and then, or I'm sorry, 10 to 50 products, and then once you have sold those, once you know that those customers actually like them, uh, then you start bulking up. You go 100 to 250 units, 250 to 500 units, and then you just keep on growing, keep on bulking up from there. But the big mistake that a lot of people make is they buy too many units too soon and they'll wrap up their capital, you'll wrap up your money in your inventory so you can't afford to go out there and market the product, which is very necessary. So, um, so, so very, very common mistake. And again, please use that growth curve, the correct growth curve, 10 to 50 products, 100 to 250, 250 to 500, and then the sky's the limit. But if you don't scale up slow, uh, there's a lot of risk. There's a lot of risk that you just don't need to deal with. If you do scale up slow, you're limiting your downside while maximizing your upside. So that's what we want to do. Cool. So eventually success started to happen, and luckily, because at a certain point I was running out of counterfeit money, um, so success eventually started to happen. And I see the question marks blowing up. You guys are awesome. Keep it up. Man, yeah, uh, TJ said, Hi, I'm so glad that I did this course with my PhD and all. Thanks, you, thanks for all your teaching from February 2016. I turned $800 to $100,000 in 12 months. TJ, you're a goddamn badass. Look at this guy. Guys, I am not even kidding either. Watch, I have to show you this on a screenshot just to show you that I'm not BSing. Freaking TJ here is rocking it. TJ said, just drop it in to say, Hi, glad I did this course. In a PhD and all, February 2016, 800 to 100 grand in, in 14 months. That is awesome, my friend. Uh, TJ has proved me wrong. Forget, forget what I said about PhDs. P, uh, TJ has completely proved me wrong. That is awesome. So, uh, and TJ, TJ will tell you guys, I am not your traditional uh, webinar guru, right? I'm going to give you guys some real golden nuggets here today so you can replicate those results that TJ got. Even if you're not my client, I want you guys to have success because I hate the traditional road of success. I want to see, I think colleges are dead. I think they're gone, and I think you guys are the future, and, and self-education is the future. So even if you're not my client, like, that's fine, guys, but go, you know, transform the world. Just doing this stuff on your own is going to transform the world in the way I want to see it. So get out there and do it. So let me say, college sucks, absolutely. Jobs, too, though, jobs, too. Like, we, we have so many more clients that are at, like, 38 years old, they did everything right, they got the degree, the mortgage, the family, and the white picket fence, and they hate it. And now they want to go take some risk and really live their lives, right? So, so that is life, right? Entrepreneurship, this is living, guys. This is fun stuff. So eventually success started to happen. First great product I found is, um, Jared said, college isn't dead as a moneymaker. That's true. Um, 
first great product I found were these motivational pillows. And these were awesome because not only could I ship these over really, really cheap, right? These things are really light. I could vacuum seal them, so really light and cheap to ship. But then I could also create different product variations for different customers very, very easily, right? To come up with a different product, all I had to do was print a different quote on the pillow. So it was great. I could come up with all these different products, ship them all over really cheap from the same supplier, and this was a great product for me. This was my first moneymaker, and what showed me that I can legitimately make money in e-commerce too, not just with counterfeits. Uh, from there, and this is this is the interesting thing, guys, and I see this happen time and time again. When you are doing product selection, give me give me a one in the question box if finding a product is the toughest thing for you right now. If that's like the main thing that's holding you back, give me a one. Yeah, Christina, uh, we are just flooded with ones. All right, now I now I know what to focus on after uh, after we get through this part. All right, so lots of ones in here. What's really interesting, guys, is there are thousands and thousands of great products out there at any given time that you can launch a business with. Not even make money with, but launch a full-fledged business with. The problem is confidence. The problem is clarity, right? And that's what happened to me because I, I found, you know, I had no good products. I finally found one good product. And what happened was I gained confidence in myself and my ability to pick good products. So after that, everything just started to click for me. And all of a sudden, I would go back and look at products that I had already looked at, and they would all of a sudden make sense to me. I would say, man, I can make money with that. But it was convincing myself that it, it, you know, the confidence was what I was missing. Once I found my first legitimate product and started selling it, I had the confidence to go out there and grow. But the problem is when you don't have that confidence, you're going you're gonna to double think, right? You're going to self-doubt your every decision. You're going to overthink everything. And that's what I was doing for a very long time. But finally, I, I found one good product and it just kind of spiraled. It snowballed into a bunch of good products. I started selling uh, decorative knives and like, you know, movie swords and stuff and all these things, uh, sword, samurai cutting blocks and stuff. So I sold all these like samurai sword things. That went really well for me. Um, after that, I went into LED light bulbs, and this was good because I was just riding a trend here, right? When LED light bulbs first came out, uh, I didn't have to advertise them. The, the world was advertising them for me. So every day, people were coming in and buying LED light bulbs, and I was just there to sell it to them. So, uh, so I made money on the LED light bulbs for a good year, year and a half, um, and then, then the world changed again. Then the world changed again. So I, I was selling these, uh, these, these little airsoft rifles, right? And it was actually a pretty expensive little rifle. These things cost like 60, 70 bucks uh, for people to buy them from me. Um, I was getting them for like 15, 20 bucks. But, um, but I was selling these airsoft rifles. This one specifically is called the M82P. I still know all the model numbers and things like that. But once I started selling this airsoft rifle, something really interesting started to happen. Um, all of a sudden after this, and, and I was really selling these on eBay to start out. So I, I would sell these things on eBay, and then right after I sold them, I would get messages from my customers. And at first, I was like, oh, no, something must be terribly wrong. But I would open up these messages, and my customers who had just bought an airsoft rifle would all of a sudden say, hey, I'm throwing a birthday party for my son this weekend, and I need four more airsoft rifles along with sidearms, BBs, vests, and masks. So, you know, here's me. I think I was like, 15, 16 at the time, I'm, I'm sitting there like, my God, I, I'm just sold, selling this one airsoft gun. Where am I supposed to get uh, BBs and vests and masks and sidearms? My God. But what basically happened was my customers forced me to create a brand. It was no longer, and, and right after this, I stopped selling everything else because these things, I was making decent money with these, but once I had a product line, once I had a brand, this was just like easy freaking money. Because again, every time I sold an airsoft rifle, they would email me for the BBs. They would email me for all the other stuff. And guys, what I eventually realized is that product line extensions are where the money is at, right? When I first got started in this business, I, was, I just wanted a product to sell, right? That's all I wanted. It wasn't like I was trying to be the next Bill Gates. It wasn't like I was trying to, uh, you know, compete with Elon Musk and put someone on Mars before he was. I just didn't want to go to school, right? That's all I wanted. So, so when I first got started in this, I was so happy to just make some money selling pillows and knives and light bulbs. Uh, once I had this airsoft thing, though, 
things really picked up and I just kind of was along for the ride. It happened so organically because again, once I had customers emailing me about this stuff, I would just go email my supplier and I would say, hey, can you send over BBs and this and that and this? And they say, yeah. So so what, what basically happened here, guys, and let me exemplify it and make sure you're taking notes, guys. This is stuff that we do not give away for free. Uh, this is This is the good stuff. So let me take you through an example of what I see a lot of new e-commerce entrepreneurs do, right? So new e-commerce entrepreneurs, first things first, we got to get one product up, right? That's like the bare minimum. We got to get a product up and selling. And that's absolutely the, the right way to think. Like when you are first starting out, we got to just get some revenue in the door, get some cash flow in the door. So you know, let's say let's say you go out there and you're selling this pad folio, right? Nice leather pad folio. Everyone loves it. Um, so you're selling this baby on Amazon. Let's say what most of what most people want to do, in, in my opinion, the the what seems less risky and and you know not as scary is if you're selling a black leather pad folio. Well, let's come out with a you know, tan leather pad folio or a khaki, right? Let's come out with product variations, different colors and things like that. Well, that can help, right? That can help. What we usually see is that if we're going to come out with a variation, right? If I'm selling this and I want to come out with a different color, we're going to see about a 5% bump in revenue. That's typically what we'll see. Now, with product line extensions, it is a whole different ballgame, guys. And this is why product line extensions are the way to go is because if you're selling this and you come out with a pen, right, something, a simple little cross-sell and upsell, a, a piece of that product line of the pad folio, what happens is these two products start to feed into each other, right? So the people that buy your pen, Amazon will go out there and recommend the pad folio, right? They'll, they'll recommend it for months on end. They'll say, get this pad folio. It's what you want. Um, and same vice versa from the pad folio to the pen. So what we see with product line extensions is a 15 to 40 percent, 15 to 40 percent bump in revenue with each and every additional product line extension. So that's where the money's at, and that's why that's how you turn this thing from a hustle into a business. Uh, what we're going to go over next, guys, is how to actually find your first product, how to find your pad folio to go out there and start selling. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the product line extension though, because that's where the magic is at. And that's the stuff we usually don't talk about here on these webinars because that, that's, again, a 15 to 40% bump in revenue with each additional product line extension. This is how you turn this thing into a real powerhouse business and not just you hustling around selling airsoft guns like I was, right? So that is how success happened for me. And, guys, this is all before the time I went to college. Uh, I know, you know most people aren't as uh, insane as me to, like, abandoned the traditional education for it, but that was just my, my style and my story. Uh, so let's go over some stats. Uh, so again, this is from my teenage e-commerce years. Um, the counterfeits I made about 60 grand in profit on. Good on that. Guys, do, no one should walk away from this webinar trying to sell counterfeits though. You can make so much more money selling simple little products on Amazon now uh, than counterfeits. Counterfeits a bad, bad business to be in now. Um, first legitimate product I had were the motivational pillows. Made about 27 grand a year in profit on those. After that, I went into the swords, the knives, the collectible swords, the samurai swords, the cutting blocks, all that. Uh, made about 50 grand a year in profit on those. This is all net, by the way. Uh, the third legitimate product I had was the airsoft business, and this really expanded quickly for me. It went from one airsoft rifle to I had like 15 or 20 different airsoft rifles, the masks, the BBs, and all like everything you could think of. Uh, built up a pretty successful and a pretty reputable little airsoft brand in my time doing it, and uh, made made a lot of money doing it too. Um, this this business model is what kept me out of school and kept me out of the job market. Right? Uh, I have never had a job. I have I went to college for three months to make my parents happy until they kicked me out because I didn't have a diploma. Uh, so you are you are talking right now to a high school dropout who has never had a job who decided to prove the world wrong anyways to just prove them all wrong that was my main motivation and uh, and that's that's what we want to replicate here with you guys here today we want to help you prove those people wrong um, so it's all about baby steps guys it's all about having that step-by-step -step system 
again, like when you're first starting this business, it is so you, you spend so much time on product research and selection. And I understand, right? I did the same thing. We're gonna do it in a second here. We're actually gonna do some product research together. Um, but what I eventually figured out, guys, is that the product is not the problem. The the process is the problem, and the process is the solution. Uh, if you have a good process, if you actually know what you're doing, uh, you can take pretty much any product and turn it into a successful product line that makes money for you day in and day out. Um, so again, I did this with pillows, I did this with knives, with airsoft guns, all sorts of things, right? How did this business end? And I'm going to speed through the rest of this so we can get to the product research, guys. But um, but 2007, um, what actually happened, I guess, was a bunch of uh, actual firearm manufacturers in China uh, were, were using airsoft guns to smuggle uh, weapons into the United States. Who, who would have thought it, right? So what they were doing was they were putting these little yellow or these orange tips on actual pistols, and then they would ship over uh, a bunch of airsoft guns and pistols with uh, little orange things on them, and this is how they were smuggling guns into the country. So in 2007, China banned the export of weapon lookalikes. They said... Uh, we, we can't control the exports of these weapon lookalikes anymore, so airsoft guns, no more. Um, so that was actually the end of my airsoft business. I didn't get to sell the business. Uh, it just went under. <laughs> so China, at the swipe of a pen, uh, kind of killed that business. But, uh, but don't be worried about that, right? That's extremely, extremely rare that um, the government's going to get involved in any of your business. So right after that, um, this was 2007, so this was the social media years, right? Uh, we, we actually launched a social network in uh, 2007 called Affluence. It's a social network for the confirmed ultra-wealthy, so you have to send in your tax returns to get approved to the social network. Um, this company did really, really well for us. It turned out that companies like American Express, the black card and everything, and NetJets, they loved us because they could advertise to people that had a verified net worth of above $5 million, right? So we actually sold this company pretty quickly, me and a group of investors. And then we turned around, and this was in 2008. We said, what is the next big thing, right? Social, we already took advantage of social media. What's the next big thing that we want to get in on? Uh, 2008, Amazon was just launching Amazon FBA. And you guys have seen, obviously, this decision worked out pretty well for us. Because again, since 2008, uh, Amazon's up 2,400%, right? So, um, so we said in 2008, we said, all right, what are we going into next? Amazon, e-commerce, this seems like a really hot place to be. So we bought a e-commerce company that had no e-commerce sales. They did all of their sales over the phone, and we said, we are going to take this brand and this, this product line on the internet. So we bought it for $2 million in 2008. Guys, that company today is worth at least $20 million. We have 40 full-time staff members at that company. Uh, right now, I think it's about 1,400 different products from 14 different brands. Uh, we have three or four brands that we import from other companies, so other brands. And then the, the majority of our actual profit is made on our private label brands, right? So private label brands is really where the money's at here. Uh, we just recently became the largest professional organic beauty distributor in North America. So anytime you go to a hair salon and get anything organic, it's probably coming from us. And just for uh, people always want to see the products that we're selling now. So here's just a few of them. Uh, Simply Organic. This is a product line that's based on an ingredient, right? So you can have product lines that are based on different things. You can have product lines that are based on ingredients like this one. So So we're saying in this product line, we say olive leaf extract has these benefits and because of that olive leaf extract is kind of the base ingredient across this entire product line right so so that's one type of product line you can do and then we obviously have lifestyle product lines as well uh, and lifestyle brands so so we have some ingredient based brands and some lifestyle based brands this is one of our major brands from Italy it's called Owe uh, so we get products from China from Italy from Australia from the United States we have suppliers from all over the world now and um, good stuff Jared Dickinson said no shit my girlfriend uses that so thanks awesome stuff Jared our uh, our team will be happy to hear that every once in a while we get some crossover between the uh, startup bros people and the simply organic people so uh, good stuff. We got Luma Lease. This is a, just a simple skincare line. This is one of our simpler lines, and this is what I want to show you guys how to build today is that kind of product line. Nothing crazy, nothing complex, uh, but, but just a nice little 5 to 10 product product line. 
Uh, here's just a bunch of our different products. I could show you products all day. That's not what you guys want to see, though. What you guys want to see is how to go from confused to this, okay? And guys, this is what it's all about. I am My goal for today is not for you to be the next Bill Gates. Uh, this will not make you a billionaire in the next two months, right? What this will do, though, it, you can easily, easily make three to five grand a month, uh, in day, you know, month in, month out, almost passively, uh, j just with a nice little product line, a nice little product line. So that is my goal today: is to take you, because guys, like you guys, aren't having problems with motivation, right? You just sacrificed a holiday to be on this webinar, so you guys are motivated. You guys are probably ready to work hard. Again, the problem is clarity and confidence. You don't have a roadmap that you know is going to work with 100% certainty. So your brain is playing tricks on you. It's saying, well, maybe there's a better way to do this. Maybe I need to go research this, right? But, but that's not how you build the business. My goal for today is to take you from that confused area, the question marks. I want to take you from question marks to a really, really clear roadmap on how to roll out not only your first product, but a few products in that product line. And that's all we want, guys. It's so simple. Like, don't, don't over-complexify this like so many people do. Uh, it's so easy to make this more complex than it is. All we want to do is find one beachhead product, what I call a beachhead product, and we'll talk about that in a second. But we want to find one product to launch, and then once that product is up and it's selling, we're just going to create uh, think about it like a bicycle wheel, right? A hub and spoke model. We want one product that will be the hub of your product line, and then we want nice little spokes going out. And each one of the spokes that you build is another 15 to 40% bump in revenue, right? So that is what the whole game plan is based around, is let's get one product up and then beef out that product line, right? Put a nice little 510 product product line, put a nice little bow on it, and that product line is going to sell for you day in and day out on Amazon with no extra effort from yourself. It is true passive income once we get the product line up. So that is the goal for today. Um, and then I'm just going to skip through this stuff, guys. You guys already know about Startup Bros. But, um, but so our e-commerce company, this was in 2008. By 2010, it was worth $20 million. Um, I don't work there day to day anymore. I'm in my home office right now. We got the Startup Bros team over in the other side of the house. Um, my beauty company is down the street that way, and uh, and I just don't go in day to day. Um, I have a lot more fun just hanging out with you guys on webinars and uh, this sort of stuff, hanging out in my office. So uh, hanging out with my cats. Um, so so we spend a lot of time with e-commerce entrepreneurs now, and it's just afforded us these crazy opportunities. Like now, you know, we're friends with Damon Johnny. He comes to our events. We do these massive conferences all around the world. Uh, we're doing a big conference at the Canton Fair in China uh, in October. So, you guys, welcome to come. But um, so so this has just been an incredible ride, an incredible ride. We have seen things. Uh, go from me sitting in my room uh, just trying to make anything work to me taking selfies with Damon John here. You know, So it's, it's just crazy what e-commerce has done for me and my life. And I want to replicate that for you guys because like I said, uh, this is not like some strategy I just dreamed up last night. right? This is a strategy that has been used by thousands and thousands of new entrepreneurs to start these businesses from scratch. So that's what we're going to get into now and uh, fun stuff. So before, before I jump into the actual kind of step-by-step -step rollout strategy of this business, uh, I do want to hang out in the question box for just a second. My, uh, sorry, I think I'm starting to get blisters on my tongue here or something from, uh, from talking so much. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a, a drink of coffee, a drink of water, and hang out in the question box for a minute here. Steve, what's, uh, what's it looking like in the question box? We got Steve Stalma, the director of operations here. Uh, in the question box. How's it looking in there? People having a good time? Woo! It's a wild question box in here, guys. It's been a few months since we've had this many people on a webinar, so you're keeping me busy, but we definitely have a lot of engaged questions here. My only suggestion, folks, make sure you have a pen and paper because the stuff he's about to get into is going to come fast and you're going to want to write it down. Yeah, technically, we haven't actually done any training yet. This is all uh, setting the foundation for the next part here. Yeah, cool. that's right. So, uh, guys, keep the questions coming. Um, oh, yeah, Leona's reading The Power of Broke. Yeah, that's uh, Damon John's new book and a great book. I love that concept. Uh, he was 
talking to us about that at uh, our last event. Love the concept. So, um, Awesome stuff. Mahai said, what does FBA stand for? I will go over that in just a second. Um, hopefully Hector won't be upset with us, but um, all right, cool. So let's do it. I got some questions coming in. Guys, uh, Steve is a machine. He's answering the vast majority of questions. And, uh, and keep them coming. Keep them coming. So, excuse me. The first thing we need to go over here is what is private label and FBA? Because that is kind of what we're combining here for this strategy I'm going to show you. Uh, so what are private label and FBA? And why are they so hot right now? Why is it that e-commerce has been around for almost 20 years now and it's just now starting to really pick up? So, excuse me for a second while I digest this coffee and water. So, uh, Amazon is drowning in customers right now. Literally, Amazon does not have enough sellers. They are begging new sellers like yourselves to come on their platform and start selling. This is why private label sellers can make so much money right now selling through Amazon is because they are literally desperate for you guys to get on there and start selling to their customers. Uh, again, most people, when you're first starting out in business, your brain is going to play this trick on you where it tries to tell you that whatever you're trying to do is not possible. Because, guys, we evolved in a world where we had to take, we had to not expend calories, right? We couldn't burn calories. We had to conserve calories. So the brain naturally tries to not take any effort, right? That's how we've evolved. Um, you guys have to override that. As entrepreneurs, we have to override the natural pessimism and worrying of our brain and inject it with optimism and hope, right? So most people, when they're starting this business, they think, man, I already know what Amazon is and I shop there, so I'm probably too late to the game, right? How am I going to compete with this guy that has this webinar, right? How am I going to compete with this guy? So let's be really clear here just, just what is happening on Amazon's platform. So in December 2013, and I sorry, I'm drawn with my mouse here, so it'll be a little messy. But in December of 2015, Amazon added 23 million new Amazon Prime subscribers, right? So this isn't, this isn't 23 million first-time customers. This is 23 million people who are paying $99 a year for the privilege of being a regular customer of Amazon's, right? So that's crazy. In one month alone, Amazon added 23 million new regular customers on their platform. So in that one month, how many new sellers do you think entered that platform, huh? Uh, I mean, let's we even if we're getting crazy with it, right? Let's say 23,000 people entered the platform, right? In reality, it was probably like 2,300 new sellers entered the platform in one month. But let's get crazy with it. Let's say that there's 23,000 new sellers in the platform in that same month. That would mean, guys, that Amazon, even in the worst case scenario, Amazon is currently, day in and day out, putting in a thousand times more customers than sellers, okay? This is why this is such a crazy opportunity right now, is because the opportunity is actually expanding each and every day. The opportunity is getting bigger and easier and more lucrative, right? A thousand times more customers are entering into Amazon's platform every single day than, than sellers, right? And if we really want to get realistic with it, it's probably close to like 10,000 times more buyers than sellers. So Amazon is like under this tidal wave of new customers, right? Um, absolutely, you guys, like th this is, there's no way you can possibly convince yourself that Amazon is saturated or that it's too late to get into it. Because again, every single day, there's a thousand times more buyers going in than sellers. So Amazon is just begging you guys to get in there and start selling. Um, it's become extremely cheap to start your own e-commerce business. Guys, when I first got started, when I was a kid, I literally had to go to China. I flew to China when I was 16 years old, got translators, and started knocking on doors, me and one of my friends. So, so it used to be crazy expensive and crazy difficult to start your own e-commerce business. To create your own brand, to put your own logo on a product, you, it would be thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, guys, it is completely different now. Again, the largest company to ever go public on the U.S. stock market 
was not Exxon Mobil, was not Google, was not Apple. It was Alibaba. It was a Chinese supplier directory. So, so every supplier in the world is on Alibaba, the, the good ones, right? They're all on there. They are waiting to do business with you, with English-speaking agents. Um, so it is just so easy to start this type of business now and so cheap. Like, guys, I, had a, I used to have to go fly over there and talk to people, and they could pretty much set the terms, right? They would say, all right, the only way I'm working with you is if you buy 1,000 units, and then I would have to buy 1,000 units. Completely different now. Every supplier is online, and they're desperate for your business. They are, they are the ones that have to cater to you now because there's so many of them, and they're so easily accessible. So now people are willing to sell you five products, ten products. People are willing to do customizations that they would have never done a few years ago. Um, it is, again, becoming extremely cheap to get started in this business because all the suppliers are having to cater to you guys now, to new Amazon sellers, and that's where all the money's at. So, so suppliers are just so much easier and cheaper to work with now. It's crazy. Again, back then, people didn't even speak English when I got started in this. I had to get translators. Now everyone has an English-speaking agent, and they are sitting there waiting to do business with you. Um, the biggest difference of all, guys, is inventory. Um, in 2008, Amazon came out with something called Amazon FBA. And for anyone who doesn't know what FBA is, FBA stands for Fulfillment by Amazon. And what a fulfillment center is, is it's basically a warehouse that will act as your warehouse. So you're going to ship all of your products to that fulfillment center, that Amazon fulfillment center, and Amazon, whenever you sell a product, Amazon's going to send that product out of their warehouse for you with your name on it, right? So, so fulfillment centers have revolutionized this business because when I got started, not only did I have to buy like a thousand units at a time, but then I would have to store those thousand units somewhere. I would have to ship them out when people actually bought them. So I had friends in my house every day uh, helping me ship things out. I had boxes in my kitchen, my garage, my room, just everywhere. There were airsoft crap everywhere. Well, guys, you don't even have to touch your inventory anymore. The way this business works now is you're going to have a supplier. Who knows where they're at? They could be in China and uh, Cambodia and Florida. It doesn't matter where your supplier is at. But your supplier is going to ship to an inspection center. The inspection center is going to do everything you need to your product. They'll put it in new boxes, new packaging, whatever you want. And then that's going to go off to your fulfillment center. Once it's at the fulfillment center, it's just going to sit in their warehouse. And whenever you sell a product to your customer, the fulfillment center will send it out. So, guys, you don't even have to look at your inventory anymore. The majority of the products that I sell, I, I, I mean, we still have a warehouse and everything, so we are obviously looking at those. But, but anything we're selling on Amazon, we don't see that inventory, right? It's all Amazon has gotten this to a point where you don't even have to look at your inventory, and you have, you have products going from your supplier to FBA to your customer. So, like, just incredible what FBA has done for this business. Because, um, again, like, I have a warehouse. It sucks. Uh, you guys aren't going to have to do that. You guys are going to get incredible value out of uh, outsourcing all of your shipping and all of your inventory storage to Amazon, FBA centers. So awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Um, I should probably stop calling this a New Year's to-do list, but that's what it is right now. Um, so we're going to get into uh, some of the nitty-gritty of this presentation here today. Um, obviously, we've already gone through lots of valuable little tidbits um, hopefully Hector has uh, <laughs> started taking notes. Hector said, what is FBA an abbreviation for? Uh, that's Fulfillment by Amazon. So it's Amazon's Fulfillment Centers. It's their warehouses that you're going to put your product through. That's what FBA is. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. So how do we take advantage of this whole Amazon apparatus, right? How do we take advantage of the incredible amount of wealth that is just pouring into the e-commerce space right now? Well, again, it's, it's not about going out there and becoming the next Apple overnight, right? It's about a, a simple 90-day rollout strategy, and that's what I am all about. Guys, if it takes you more than 90 days to start this type of business, then you've done something wrong. Um, you know, we're launching new brands all the time. We have clients launching new brands, new product lines all the time. 90 days is really all it takes to get this thing off the ground and, and passively generating income. So that's what we're going to go over here today. Uh, first things first, we need to get that beachhead product. I'll talk about what a beachhead product is. 
I'm going to give you uh, my product research workbook. So this is a, a series of algorithms and research techniques that I've developed over the past 15 years to help me find beachhead products, to, to help me find the first product that I'm going to launch in a product line because that is surely the most expensive one or the, um, uh, the, the most important one, not the most expensive one. Cosman said, is a budget of $150 enough to start? Um, that's, that is right at the bottom of a budget to start. Uh, I would really like to see people start with $250 to $500, um, but, but $150, you can make it happen. You can make it happen. Um, so again, first things first, we're going to find that killer product. After we do find that killer product, and we're going to do some live product research, don't you worry. Uh, after that, we're going to actually source the product. I'll show you exactly how I find suppliers, how I vet suppliers, uh, how I know a good supplier versus a bad supplier. And right after that, I'm going to go over negotiations as well. Um, I'm actually going to give you guys a few different negotiation scripts here today. So this is stuff that I just, like, I don't, when I'm talking to suppliers, it's not like I'm typing to every single one, right? I have templates that I just go through and copy and paste and send them off when I want a new product. So I'm going to actually give you guys those templates that I use so you guys are going to be able to go out there and just confidently start to look for these suppliers. Uh, if we have time, we will go over this stuff as well, which is about how to roll out those first initial sales and then how to turn a active income business of selling these physical products into a passive income product line, which is really uh, important if you want to, you know, uh, go on vacation and spend more time with your family, right? Most people, most people that are entrepreneurs, they aren't doing it for the money. They're doing it for the freedom that the money allows, right? So you guys really want to save time and, and freedom more than money. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to turn this thing from a active, like one product selling day in and day out where you have to hustle for it to a passive income product line where the listings just sit on Amazon and generate income for you day in and day out. So I suppose we will get into it. Step one is finding a killer product. I'm going to grab one more drink of coffee and water here before we get into it. And uh, Steve is answering questions as fast as he possibly can, but, uh, but you guys are asking them a little faster. So I'm going to grab a drink really quick, and we'll jump in and start to uh, actually do some of the live product research together. Oh my gosh, you're right. I'm looking now. I'm getting a little behind. Uh, you guys are swamping me, but... I'll keep this thing going. Keep asking, guys. Yeah, Catalan said uh, in a previous video, Will said to start with uh, different order amounts. Yeah, business changes, man. Business changes. Uh, it is a different business today than it was three months ago. It will be a different business three months from now. So, um, so, so absolutely. I mean, this is why you again, you snooze, you lose on this type of business. It is growing so quickly that yes, things are changing quick. But the people that are on top of those changes, uh, they're making more and more money with every single change, right? You, you just got to get in there and get started. That's, that's how you take advantage of it. All right, cool. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. And guys, we will have a Q&A at the end as well. Steve's answering as many as he possibly can. Uh, I'll start answering questions at the end as well, and, uh, and, and we'll do it. So finding a killer product. So what makes a good product? That's the first thing we got to know, right? Before we even go in there and start looking at products and sitting on Amazon, the first thing we want to figure out is what makes a good product. And excuse me, I'm going to lay back now, guys. I told you it's going to be a laid back session. So. Um, so what makes a good product? Good products tend to be small, light, and simple to ship, right? I don't want something. My general rule of thumb is can I pick it up and hold it in my hands and toss it around a little bit and not worry about it breaking, right? I don't want something big. I don't want something bulky. I don't want something heavy. I want something that can fit in a nice standard little box under three pounds that I can sell day in and day out. So small, light, and simple to ship because we don't want to spend a bunch of money on returns and we don't want to spend a bunch of money on shipping and things like that. So small, light, simple to ship. We want products that sell between $15 and $100. Why is that? Well, on the low end, $15, guys, when you're selling on Amazon, Amazon's going to take some fees, right? They're, they're going to take some fees both to ship the product for you and to actually sell the product. So our products need to be at least $15 to cover the shipping and the fees, right? 
Um, so, so just general rule of thumb, don't look at products that are less than $15. Now, once you are up and running, once you have a few products up and you are experienced, then you can start to break some of these rules, right? You can sell products for under $15, but for your first product, for that beachhead product that we're going to invade the market with, uh, we need that product to be selling for at least $15. And just to give you guys an idea, what, what does it mean when I say beachhead product, right? Well, what I'm referring to, I'm not sure if this is an appropriate thing to refer to or not, but what I'm referring to is actually World War II. Um, when, when the United States went to invade Europe, right, Nazi, Germ or Nazi Europe, and we wanted to uh, retake Europe and reclaim Europe, uh, what did we do? Well, we had a beachhead rollout strategy, and that's exactly what I'm suggesting here, right? Not, nothing, not taking anything away from the heroes on the beaches, but, but that concept is what we want to uh, emulate, right? When, when we wanted to take over that, that European market that we just didn't have any representation at all, no market share, what do we need to do? We need to find a beachhead product which we are going to in, use to invade the marketplace, develop that foothold, and then expand out from there with other products in our product line, right? So that's what I'm referring to. We need to find that, that beachhead product to just ram up on the beaches and, and take the beach, and then we're going to expand out from there, right? So your first product does need to be pretty good. Uh, the, the first product is always going to take the longest time to research, the longest time to find, but once we have that beachhead product, all the product line extensions, all the additional products that we'll use to expand out from there, those are so much easier and so much quicker to roll out with. So the, the first product you find is really going to be the toughest one, right? And that's what, I, that's what I mean when I say beachhead product. So again, our beachhead product, we want to make sure it sells for at least $15. Now, future products, we can break these rules, but beachhead products have to sell for $15. On the high end of this, guys, $100 is not going to require a ton of buying power, right? If you're trying to get started with a product that costs $500, well, it's going to cost a fortune just to get samples, right? But if we're starting with a product that costs $50, $70, $100, bucks, that's so much more manageable to actually get started with that product. Now we can actually you know, buy a few units, sell them, take the profits, and, and grow with our profits rather than having to put money into the business, right? I don't want you guys to have to put money into the business outside of that very, very first product. That very first product is what's going to fund everything else in your business, and, and that is the goal. That's even how we do different product lines now, right, guys? Like in our accounting systems, each brand and each product line has its own book, right? And, and, and then from there, we say, all right, we don't want to go too far. We don't want to pull money away from other successful brands to put into this brand, right? We always want our brands to be bootstrapped. We want them to be self-funded through their own sales. And that's exactly what you're going to do with this strategy. And I know I'm using lots of big words and stuff, guys, but, um, but, but keep in mind, this stuff is really, really simple. I am not the best internet marketer in the world, so I'm not going to make this sound all simple and sexy for you, but I will tell you how to actually build businesses because that's what I'm good at. So good margins is the other thing we need to keep in mind, right? Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what margin is or how to calculate it, just use a multiple of your cost, right? So don't worry about 50% margin. Worry that it's at least, at least two times your cost, right? So if I'm buying a product that costs... Uh, $15, I want to sell it for at least double my cost, which would be $30, right? So that's kind of the minimum margin, minimum markup. And then the sweet spot where you're really going to see rapid growth in your business, and this is what I would recommend looking for, you know, you might, you, a lot of people have to settle for these types of products, but if you can find a product that has three times your cost, my God, you are going to build this business really, really quickly because if you are buying products at $15 and selling them at $45, not only are you going to be able to pay for the same shipping and everything, and I know my, my pen's getting a little messy here, but not only are you going to be able to pay to ship that product, now you can start to advertise and promote that product as well. Um, and you can you know, use these profits to come out with different products in your product line and things like that. So I really like to see three times your cost um, but the minimum is two times your cost, so keep that in mind. 
Um, and if that's what makes a good product, well, what makes a bad product? Well, bad products tend to be pretty much the exact opposite, right? So heavy, bulky, hard to ship. Um, I don't want to sell, again, anything that weighs over five pounds, I don't really want to sell as a beachhead product. Uh, once you're up and running, once you have a, a customer base, once you have different products, um, then you can start to do heavier products. But for your first product, don't do it. Uh, ju just stick to lighter, again, under five pounds. Ideally, under three pounds is your, your very first beachhead product. Um, I want to avoid technically complex products that require you know, high quality engineering. I always think about it in moving parts, right? The more moving parts a product has, the more likelihood and the more chance there is for something to go wrong. So I like to get products that have a minimal amount of moving parts. The more moving parts, the worst, right? The, the worst, I should say. So, so technically complex, you know, don't be buying car engines, don't be buying crazy electronics, um, and, and just moving parts in general, I, I would stay away from. Nicholas said, would something as pen drives apply as moving parts? Um, electronics have lots of moving parts in them. Um, electronics, at the end of the day, are transistor switches, and they turn on and off like thousands of times a second. So, uh, so yeah, I, I typically will avoid electronics. Um, I do electronics now, um, but again, it, it's late, late in my product line. It's, it's like the 140th product in my product line will be an electronic, right? So you can do electronics. I know lots of people selling electronics, but I don't know if I would start with electronics. Lots of moving parts. Um, you want to avoid markets with lots of brand loyalty, right? If your next idea is to start selling Q-tips or Kleenex, well, it's going to cost a fortune to get people to look at your uh, soft tissue brand because you can't, Kleenex is a brand. You can't use that. Uh, Q-tips is a brand name. So anytime there's a market with crazy amounts of brand loyalty like that, just stay away from it. We don't want to uh, compete with Colgate on you know, toothpaste and stuff like that. Um, obviously, we want to stay away from trademark goods. Uh, you know, if you're selling stuff with Spider-Man on it, or if you're selling stuff with uh, Disney characters on it, that's that's bad. That's a bad thing. So don't do that. Those are trademark characters. Uh, you also want to avoid highly regulated markets, right? If your next big idea is to start selling painkillers or you know shoulder-fired missile launchers, well, that's I I can't help you there because that is a highly highly regulated market, and I would basically stay away from regulation. All right, cool. So here is the first free gift I'm giving you guys here today. Uh, if you go to startupros.com slash workbook, it's going to take you to our product research workbook. And this is something I have been developing for years and years and years. And I'm going to show you exactly how to use it here today. So guys, head over to startupros.com slash workbook. I can see lots of anonymous little animals coming on right now. So the numbers going up here. We should see uh, probably like 100 people on this spreadsheet pretty soon. Uh, so welcome to all my turtles and chipmunks and platypuses and pandas. Um, so good stuff. So th this is our product research workbook. Let me first show you why this exists. So here's what I used to do, guys. Here's what I used to do. I would, when I, when I didn't know what to sell on Amazon, right, I would go on Amazon and let's just look for some random product so gun holster, right? So I would go on Amazon and I would just start looking at products really. And um, and I didn't really have any rhyme or reason. Like I didn't have these these cool little filters and things like that, right? So I would spend hours just looking at products like this and thinking of reasons why it would or wouldn't work. But there was no consistency. I wasn't actually looking for anything, right? And it was even worse than this, right? I would go around and just like randomly look at things. I would look at like today's deals and I would just spend hours and hours going through like here's this sock, here's this knee pad, here's a, a straw. And I would just go through all these different products with no actual end in mind, right? And let me know in the question box if this is pretty similar to what you're doing right now. Like you don't have a formula that you're plugging things into. You don't actually have data points you have no comparison model to actually compare these products against each other. So what you end up doing is an exercise in insanity. You literally just scroll around Amazon and get really jealous at everyone else's success with no idea. You know, you're not getting any closer to your own success. You're just looking at products. So, uh, so I did this for 
like years, like two or three years, um, before I finally said, I am literally going crazy. I'm getting nowhere. I'm just looking at products and window shopping, essentially. So eventually I said, all right, this makes no sense. We cannot just look at products on Amazon and find good products to sell. What we need to do is, is create a comparison model, is what I call it. Uh, Karen said, Will looks tired. I was up till 6 a.m. last night, my friends, working on this stuff. So um, that's, that's what the coffee's for. Today, today I got a normal Starbucks coffee, like uh, three shots, I think. Today, today I went with the, uh, oh, you can't even see it. Today I went with the five shots. That's, that's how crazy we're getting over here. But this is the product research workbook, and what it's all about is creating a comparison model, right? What this thing does for me is it allows me to grab a minimal amount of information, right? All I need is like five or six little pieces of information. I plug that into this spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet compares everything against each other and shows me what the better um, beachhead product would be. This is all about beachhead products. Um, Hector said, bro, if you got money, you don't do Starbucks. I got a nice coffee machine out there, but I'm, I'm hooked on these uh, cinnamon dolce things. So, um, and Hector, what, if, if Starbucks isn't the, uh, the wealthy coffee, what is? I got to get, I guess that, uh, there's that, that new company that, um, the founder of Starbucks, uh, just started, but, um, all right, let's get back in it though. So this is what it's all about guys, comparison model. We are going to compare products against each other to find the best one. And in this way, we will get away from the whole concept of just looking at products for three hours and we'll actually uh, get data and we'll actually be able to compare things. So let's get into it. Let me show you how it works, guys. Um, there is one thing you are going to need to download to get this thing to work, okay? And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Um, if you see in row two here, it says where you get the data from. And you can kind of, you know, drag it down here and see that all this comes from Amazon. And then these two come from Alibaba, right? So all we're going to have to do is go to Alibaba and Amazon to get these things. Now, on Amazon, what we are going to do, guys, and, and please pay attention. This, this uh, could get confusing, but I'm going to make it as simple as I can. What we are actually doing when we are researching products to sell, we are not researching a product, right? We are researching a search keyword. The reason for this is, is when people go to Amazon to buy a product, they use this search bar, right? So let's say I came on Amazon and I wanted to buy, um, I don't know, something coffee related. So let's see what we got here. So let's say I wanted a, a coffee travel mug. Why not? So what we are going to do when we research products, we are not going to research any specific product that comes up on this page. What we're going to do is search and research this keyword. How are we going to do that? Well, what we want to do is figure out what the, the average numbers are on each and every uh, search page, right? So the way that we do this is with a piece of software called either Jungle Scout or Unicorn Smasher. And I'll show you both of these things. One of them is free. Um, but basically, let me show you what it does before I show you how to download it. So when we have these, these little Google Chrome extension, these little browser extensions, all we're going to have to do is click the tool, and it's going to come up here. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through every single product that just came up for this search term, right? So this is every single product that came up. It pulls all of the major data pieces, like the category, the estimated revenue per month, all these things. And what it does then is it aggregates. It, it gives you the, the aggregate result, the all-encompassing result, um, of everything on the first page of search results, right? So here's the average sales of this, these products. Here's the average number of reviews on a product on the first page. And the reason we do this, guys, is because when we are researching products to sell on Amazon, we want to research the, the keyword, not any specific product. Because here's the trick. If you can rank your product on page one of any major search term, you're going to make money. You know, now, now you've done it. But that's the goal. So a lot of people, when they're, when they're first getting started in this business, they're just randomly going around and looking at products and things like that 
once you really get experienced with it, you start you start researching markets and keywords because that is really how people buy products on Amazon. And through this, we can start to research how how much opportunity there is in that keyword versus how difficult it will be to launch into that keyword. And, and that's basically all we want to find, guys. We want to find a market that would be easy to get on the first page of search results and uh, and has lots of sales once we get there, right? That's all we want. So keep it simple. Now, to get that data, guys, you're going to need one of two tools. So you're going to want to download this before we get into the product research. Um, so you can use Jungle Scout, and that is definitely the one I recommend, but Jungle Scout is not free. Uh, we do have a nice little discount. If you click this link, it'll take you to a discounted, uh, like, 20 bucks off or something. Now, there is a free alternative I'm going to give you here today because, honestly, uh, most people, if you're just getting started, you, don't, you should not be buying tools, right? So most people aren't going to use Jungle Scout yet, although that is what I recommend eventually. Um, the free version of Jungle Scout is called Unicorn Smasher. Why is it called Unicorn Smasher? I have no freaking idea. has nothing to do with Amazon. But, um, but this is the, the free product research tool that will give you the exact same data as Jungle Scout, and, um, and that's, that's one you can use now uh, before, you know, if you're just getting started, you shouldn't be paying money for tools anyways. So make sure you either have Unicorn Smasher or Jungle Scout on your browser. And like I said, once you have that, you're just going to be able to click the little Jungle Scout or the Unicorn Smasher button, and it's just going to go through and do all of that data analysis for you. So that's basically it, guys. That's basically it. That's how the product research workbook works, and, um, and, and we're going to get into it. Jason, yeah, there's another research tool. There are so many different research tools out there. Um, right now, Jungle Scout, Unicorn Smasher is what we recommend. Um, the one you mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of, actually. Uh, I'll send you in a message, though, Jason. I'll send you the two good ones that, um, that I recommend. And, uh, and guys, we are going to do some product research here together today. Um, if you have any products that you would like to see me research here live, let me know. Um, and there are a lot of people here, so we're going to get as many as we can. What time is it? 4.30. We're having some fun here, guys, but we are moving slow. Um, so we're probably going to do three products here. Usually I try to do five, but we'll do three here today. And um, and good stuff, good stuff. So let's do it. Um, yeah, someone, the other day someone uh, someone had like a hammock... Um, bag or something, so we can try that one. Uh, fidget spinners are not going to be good anymore, but Nicholas knows that. He laughed about it. <laughs> uh, fruit infuser water bottle. That one's okay. It's just, yeah, meditation pillow. I like that one. I want things that I haven't heard of before, right? Um, there's something we're not going to be able to talk about here today called the product life cycle. It's very important when selecting products, but we want to find products that are early in the product life cycle. Like if I'm trying to sell, again, Q-tips, well, Q-tips are done. That's the most mature market I've ever heard of, right? We want to get in the Q-tip market when there is no Q-tip, right? When, when they're brand new and everyone's like, what's a Q-tip? We want to get into markets that invoke a dopamine reaction, uh, things that are different, things that are exciting, things that are intriguing. Um, and to be honest, like fruit infuser water bottle, Matesh, I love you, but fruit infuser water bottle is just a it's just a boring market now. Um, someone said travel lazy sofa. I love that a travel sofa. I don't even know what that is, but see, like that's that's intriguing. I'm intrigued. Um, let's see, crystal soil. All right, you guys are you guys are taking this uh, intriguing thing to a new level. Um, Someone said, what about one you actually did? Yeah, I can do bath bombs. We're launching a line of bath bombs and bath salts right now. Um, killer, killer market. So we'll research those and see how they're doing as well. All right, so we got a few products here. Um, give me a one or two in the question box, guys, to vote for this. Would you rather see me speed through all six products and show you how it's done, or would you rather me go really slowly through like three products and explain everything really in depth? Uh, one, two, all right, lots of, lots of twos coming in. So we'll do it a little bit slowly. We'll do it a little bit slower. I'm still going to try to do more than three if I can, but 
Uh, so let's start with the meditation pillow. The first thing I'm going to do, guys, is research all of these products on Amazon. I don't like to jump back and forth between Amazon and Alibaba every five minutes. So I, what I do is I brainstorm a bunch of different product ideas like this, and, and I'll go through and research all the different product ideas on Amazon first, and then I'll jump over on Alibaba and do the supply side research. Amazon's going to be your demand side research. Alibaba is going to be your supply side research. So let's do our uh, Amazon research first. So meditation pillow. And again, guys, the spreadsheet makes this easy. Um, the spreadsheet makes this easy. So we're looking for a meditation pillow. All I'm going to do is run Jungle Scout, right? I do like to scroll through and just make sure that these are all the same product, and it looks like for the most part they are, minus this one thing. So that looks fine. So we're running Jungle Scout, and all we're going to do, guys, is pretty much input this information. So the category looks like, you know, a couple home and kitchen, but for the most part, it's going to be sports and outdoors. So let's go ahead and put sports and outdoors. Um, the average price is right here, $29.77. The average BSR is the average sales rank. BSR stands for best seller ranking, right? So like the number one BSR product is the number one best seller on Amazon right now. And it changes hourly, right? So, so BSR just means sales rank, best seller rank, right? And it's just an indication of how, how much demand is there for this product, how many units are actually being sold. So the average BSR for this product is right here, the average sales rank, uh, 15,738. So we got that. Uh, the average number of reviews is going to be 188. And that's it. That's our Amazon research for that product. I don't want to go through and do uh, the supply side research yet. I want to get the data on the spreadsheet and then let the comparison model work itself. And then I can compare the products. So next thing here is travel sofa. And, ah, okay. Yeah, I do know this product then. So here's our travel sofa, uh, also called an, an air lounger or, you know, all sorts of different names for these things. Um, I'm going to change this a little bit because uh, there's a few different products that are showing up in here. Like here's the memory foam pillow. Here's, um, you know, some blankets, some pillows. Or actually, I'm sorry. Those are all sponsored products. So, so we can run this. Yeah, so there's one product here that's not exactly what we're looking for, but that's fine. Um, these ones down here are sponsored products, so we don't have to worry about them. But So let's go ahead and run our Jungle Scout analysis. And don't forget, guys, there's so many sub-segments of these markets. Like, I just saw this thing while we were going through and looking at this product. Where'd it go? Um, like, here is a, a bed for your car, right? That's, that's another interesting sub-segment of this, this travel sofa market. But right now, we're looking at the travel sofa. So... It uh, looks like most of these are sports and outdoors again. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. The average price on this is $41.29. The average sales rank is 265118. The average number of reviews is 116, and that is it for that product. Let's look at Crystal Soil. And as you guys can see, once you get confident in this, you can really just kind of run through and put the data in the spreadsheet. It gets really easy after that. Um, so here is the water or crystal soil. Oh, okay, I know what this is then. Um, I'm not going to research this product, and let me tell you why. Because all of these are under the startup sweet spot. We cannot make money on products that sell less than $15, uh, especially for our beachhead product. So this could be a good add-on product to a, a, some other product line. But for our beachhead products, like we are not going to be able to make money. We're not going to be able to start a business off of this product. There's just not enough money in each and every sale. So, um, so we're, we're going to skip this product because it does not meet the startup sweet spot criteria. And for that reason, we just saved a few minutes, right? Just knowing the startup sweet spot will save you time and energy. So let's go look at the bath bombs. Bath bombs, these all look like bath bombs. So I'm going to run the Jungle Scout analysis here. Um, beauty and personal care. So we're going to put beauty down. The average price of this product, we're still waiting on. It will come up in a moment. 
is sixteen dollars and forty four cents. So we're going to put sixteen forty four. Uh, the average BSR on this is two four two one zero. Uh, the average reviews is three nine three. So there's that one. Um, and that's it for that. Let's do bath salts, and that'll be our last one. Then we'll jump over and do the supply side analysis. Now again, guys, you'll see all I'm really doing is putting data in a spreadsheet, right? And then I let the spreadsheet really do the heavy lifting for me. I'll show you in a moment how to actually um, how to actually compare these different products against each other. Oh, and one big thing I forgot to do too, guys, is show you how you can actually use this for yourself. That would be a pretty smart thing to do, right? Um, if you guys want to make your own copy of this spreadsheet, uh, watch my screen. I will not repeat this. Make sure you're logged into a Google account, first of all, so you can see I'm logged in my Google account right here. Um, so once you're logged into a Google account, you can just go to File, Make a Copy, and you can literally make your own private copy of this workbook that you're going to be able to use, and no one's going to be able to see your research. So uh, you'll get the same algorithms, the same code in the back end. Uh, you will just get a straight copy of my product research workbook. So check that out. Uh, again, file, make a copy is how you do that. So bath salts is the last one we're going to do. Uh, beauty and $14.60. Uh, the average BSR is 28470. Uh, the average number of views is 411. And that is it for our demand side analysis. So we've done all of the Amazon research now. Uh, the next step is to do the supply side research and see what we can actually buy these products for. So first things first is the meditation pillow. Guys, when I'm doing, when I am doing this type of research, I literally use the same keyword in Amazon and Alibaba. And then what I do is I just want to find a product that I can sell into the first page here, right? So as we can see, like the very first thing that comes up on both Amazon at, and Alibaba are the same product. These are the same exact product. And we can see that the only difference is the manufacturer put a little logo on it. So this manufacturer is definitely going to be able to put whatever logo we want on the product, right? They can put like little elastic bands. They can put our logo on it. So, so any manufacturer on Alibaba is going to be able to do this stuff. The actual private labeling is the easiest part, right? So, so that's like one product there. Um, but all I'm doing is going through and looking for similar products, and then I want to see the price, right? So here's another uh, meditation pillow, $3.50 to $8. This one's 4 to $8. Um, 3 to $8. So it seems like $8 is a really common kind of top cost, right? Here's a $6 one that looks pretty nice, uh, $6.50. So it looks like I could even get this like lower than 7 on my first order. Um, here's 7 to $8 for some really nice ones. So I think like 7 bucks a unit seems pretty realistic. That's what I'm going to put there. And then the MOQ uh, stands for minimum order quantity. I don't want you guys to be scared of the term minimum order quantity because it's very negotiable. Um, but I do want to put the minimum order down, right? So here's like 200 pieces here, um, 25 pieces here, uh, 200 pieces, 100 pieces, 25, 500, 300. So it looks like, I honestly, it looks like I can get a 100-piece minimum order not with without much difficulty at all. So I'm going to put 100 units, 7 bucks a piece. That's probably a pretty realistic price I can get this product for and, and a pretty realistic amount. So there's the meditation pillow. Again, guys, I, I put the data in the spreadsheet before I compare products against each other. So first things first, like let's get the data in the spreadsheet. Um, next, we're going to look at travel sofa. Uh, so here's a bunch of different travel sofas, right? 1023 to 1250. Here's one at six, 450 to 650, uh, 5 to 750, uh, 460 to 780. Uh, it looks like eight bucks is really like, I we could definitely get this product for eight bucks. It looks like, so that's what I'm gonna put. Here's a ten dollar one. There's some nicer ones that go up to like 12, 13, but I, I think we can compete with the eight dollar one. Let's see the MOQs here: 30, 1, 1, 1, 10, 100. 
Uh, we, we could literally get started with this product, you know, 10, 20 units. I'm going to put 50 units, um, but it seems like we can get even less than that. Um, so that's those two. Let's look at bath bombs real quick. Now, again, what kind of bath bomb do I want to buy? Uh, here's some home, some some custom handmade ones with uh, with some rose petals inside of them. So that's like different. That would be cool. Um, what else do we have though? Uh, I always like to find ones that have packaging and things like that, right? So like here's one with packaging already done. Here's one with packaging already done. So now I can go to these manufacturers and literally just say, hey, I want you to print this logo on this box or this design on this box. And it's super cheap to get my own packaging done. Uh, here's another one with packaging already done. Here is another one with packaging already done. So literally what you're going to do when you order these is just tell the supplier what to print on the front of the box. And it's going to be your company name rather than OEM, right? Um, but I already know what bath bombs cost, and it's going to blow your freaking mind. Um, so, so this is a set of six bath bombs. It'll cost about a buck sixty for the whole freaking box. That's how crazy this market is. The MOQ on bath bombs. Let's go look at it real quick. Um, two thousand, two thousand, a thousand, a uh, hundred, um, three thousand, a thousand. So the MOQ is kind of high on this. Um, keep in mind again, we can talk down M MOQ pretty easily, but just for reference, I'm going to put that that one thousand now. Um, and then bath salts are our last thing here. Uh, Miss Al said, how do I know if suppliers on Alibaba are trustworthy? I will show you how to do that right after this. Right now, we're not talking to suppliers. That's a really important distinction. We're in step one. Step one is finding a product. Don't worry about finding suppliers yet. This is why most people never have any success in business is because they're always worried about what's going to happen next. You guys need to worry about what's happening now. Right now, we need to find a goddamn product to sell. If we're sitting here talking to suppliers at this point, or even thinking about talking to suppliers at this point, it is literally a waste of time, energy, calories, everything. It is just a waste. So please, you know, you have to, you have to focus on things until you get that end result. Once it's finished, then we're going to go on and talk about suppliers. Um, so bath salts, let's go look at this real quick. Um, and obviously we're going for like bath salts that you put in your bathtub, not the uh, stuff that you smoke. <laughs> so uh, I don't I don't think you can get that on Alibaba. But um, so all these bath these bath salts, right? You see all these different pricing and all this stuff. Super super cheap though. Um, here's like two bucks a piece. Um, and again, I like to find I like to find sets, right? So I'm gonna put bath salt sets. Bath salt set. And now you're going to see a lot more packaging as well, right? Lots, lots more packaging. So I want to find a nice little bath salts set and see what we can get that for. Um, I don't see exactly what I want to show you guys here. So I might end up skipping this because it looks like all sorts of different things are coming up here. Um, so I might end up skipping this because I do want to... Here's a gift set as well. All right, here's some bath salts that are actually what we're looking for. Buck fifty per unit. Um, give me so many bath bombs. And every once in a while, like if, if we weren't on a live webinar right now, I, I could show you guys how to kind of manipulate Alibaba searches to get um, exactly what you're looking for. But I don't want to make you guys wait for that. So I'm just going to use this one. Uh, buck fifty, two thousand pieces. For a packaged uh, set of bath salts, and that's it. That's it. We've done the product research. It is that easy. So again, you've probably realized that this is much different than most product research you've seen out there, because most people just kind of randomly look at products and hope for some luck, uh, and that'll work. Like you know, if you're just depending on luck, yeah, like one out of five products are going to work, and you'll still make money. Um, but most people want to know that they have a good product before they actually move forward with it. And this is how you do that. Um, so guys, once we have reached this point, we want to actually analyze the results of these products, right? So we did four, yeah, four different products together here today. Let's go ahead and research those products together. So the first thing, or, or compare those products together, I should say. So the first thing I look at is the operating margin. I want an operating margin of at least 38%, okay? 
Uh, operating margin, like don't worry about what it is or the definition or anything. Just know that this has to be 38% for me to even care about the product. Uh, every single product that we researched here today actually has uh, at least a 38% a operating margin. So we're good there. Uh, no products are eliminated on that. The next thing, I need my profit or I need my profit per unit to be at least eight dollars per unit. Uh, all the products that we researched here together today have at least an eight dollar profit per unit, which is pretty rare. Usually, uh, usually we don't have a hundred percent rate of a uh, success here. So now we have products that we can actually, you know, compare the profitability of them. Like this is how we're really going to select a product, right? Now we can compare the profitability of different products against each other. Now we can compare the profit per unit of different products against each other. The last thing I want to show you is my, my custom algorithm that I had developed called the launch difficulty score. The launch difficulty score is basically a complex supply and demand analysis. And what this is going to show you, a lower launch difficulty score shows a market that has lots of demand without much competition. A higher launch difficulty score shows a, a market with more competition. So you can think about your launch difficulty score as almost your competition score. And you know most people are sitting there looking at like, well, there's 15 other sellers of this product. The number of sellers does not matter. What matters is how many buyers are there versus sellers of that product, right? It's all a supply and demand equation. So the launch difficulty algorithm does that equation for you. Um, and basically, I don't really like to launch products with anything over a 50 launch difficulty score. Anything over a 50 launch difficulty score doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that it's going to be expensive to launch that product. The higher your launch difficulty score is, the more expensive it will be to advertise the product and get it you know, break through the noise and the clutter and the competition, right? So what we want to find for our first beachhead product is a product that has an, a, a launch difficulty score under 50. And um, every single one of these is actually pretty competitive except for the uh, meditation pillow, not the motivational pillow. Motivational pillow, that was my product from way back when. But the, the meditation pillow, uh, we make $14 every time one of these sells um, there's a huge amount of them selling. This BSR is really, really good. So there's a lot of units. There's a lot of people buying these things every single day, and there's not a ton of competition, right? We can launch this thing pretty easily and get on the first page of search results. So without a doubt, Meditation Pillow is by far the best product here. And guys, we can get started with this product. We can make a full bulk order of 100 units with 700 bucks which is, yeah, a good amount of money, but, but we're talking about starting a multi-million dollar business with 700 bucks here. That's about, that's a pretty good trade-off, right? So not crazy expensive to get started with this product. Um, great profit per unit, great margin, and, um, and the launch difficulty is not high. So it's going to be relatively easy for us to launch this product. So that is it, guys. That is how we do product research. That is how we do product research. And um, and with that, I think what time is it? 4:53. So we'll, we'll I'll go through how to source and negotiate products with you guys, and then we'll do a short Q and A at the end, and um, and we'll probably run this for another about 30 minutes. Um, I do want to do a quick giveaway with you guys, though. Uh, you guys have been just a great crowd to hang out with here so far. Um, let us do a giveaway. So guys. I'm going to come up with a giveaway question here. Let's give away two $25 Amazon gift cards. So we'll give away two $25 Amazon gift cards to, um, all right, here's, here's question number one. Question number one. Here's the real test of if you're paying attention. Um, question number one is this. Are you guys ready for this? Are you guys ready? Get ready in the question box. 25 bucks to whoever gets this right first. How many shots do I have in my coffee today? Oh, yes, look at that. There are the the box is flooded. The box is flooded. This is crazy. I did not expect that. Um, people were paying attention. Yeah. Um, so John got this right. John got this right first. And you know what? I think John even saw me like moving my coffee. He knew what was coming. John's a smart guy. All right. So John is the winner of that first Amazon gift card. 
And let me just say that pretty much everyone else got that correctly, um, but, but John was the first. Yeah, quick reflexes indeed, John. That was crazy. All right, so that's question giveaway question number one. What should I make question number two? Let's think here. All right, all right. This one is truly, like, I am going to be surprised if anyone gets this. I said this in passing like 10 minutes ago. I'll be so impressed if you guys get this. What time did I go to bed last night? Wow. You guys, you guys are taking notes. So we got tons of people. Yeah, 6 a.m. was my bedtime last night, getting lots of work done. Um, so Aleha, which, which I think I'm, I'm pronouncing that right, Aleha got that one correctly first. You guys are freaking paying attention. I got I to gotta be careful what I'm saying here. These guys are taking notes. Um, all right, awesome stuff. Well, that's two $25 Amazon gift cards to you guys. Uh, you guys will literally have those gift cards within the next 10 minutes. Uh, we got John and Aleha, which is a, two awesome names. But um, So those are going out. And no worries. I see some frown faces. No worries, guys. Almost everyone got that correct. I am honestly impressed. Um, we're going to do more giveaways, though. We're going to do more giveaways. I'm just adjusting my pants and things right now. Uh, we're going to do more giveaways, though. So just in a little bit, we got two more gift cards we're going to give away. Hey, Will, how much were those for? Were those 25 or? Yep. Yeah, 25. All right. We'll get our uh, assistant right on that. Perfect. All right. Um, Ahmed said, more questions, please. Yes, there will be two more questions. I have to think of them first. And as you guys can see, if you pay attention, you make, you make money on these webinars. Uh, not only do you get solid, battle-tested uh, business plans, but you also see uh, real returns on these webinars. So we have decided on a product. We have decided on a product, guys. We have um, decided on the meditation pillow. So now what we need to do is find a good supplier for that pillow, right? We already looked at some suppliers, but we weren't really looking at the supplier at that point, right? We were looking at uh, just the general market. What could we buy these for? What is the general MOQ? So, uh, so now we want to find an actual supplier for this product. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, so how to find good suppliers. There's really only one place you need to go. Randy has the right question at the right time. He said Alibaba or AliExpress. Well, I use both, honestly. And um, I will typically, like if I'm just in a hurry and I just want to get some product in my hands, I'll use AliExpress. But for most major purchases and for the most part in general, I'm going to use Alibaba. Alibaba is for businesses. AliExpress is for consumers. So you will get better pricing and treated like a business on Alibaba. Randy said, which is better? Uh, they're literally the same platform, my man. It's the same company doing the same thing. Uh, one is just for consumers. The other one is for businesses. So I use Alibaba. Um, I, have, I use AliExpress all the time too. But for, for actually building this business, you guys should be using Alibaba. Um, look for gold suppliers with transaction history. Okay, so, so again, if I'm doing the meditation pillow, what I want to do is look for a gold supplier. So I'm going to check off this box right here. A gold supplier is just a supplier that has paid Alibaba to be a premium supplier. So what does that mean? Well, nothing major, right? Most suppliers are going to be gold suppliers. But if, someone's, if someone is a gold supplier and they end up scamming someone, well, Alibaba will kick them off and they won't let them be gold suppliers anymore. So whenever you see a gold supplier with like, you know, these are all two-year, one-year, every once in a while you'll find one like this, a six-year gold supplier, a seven-year gold supplier. These are extremely reputable suppliers that you can trust, right? And that's why I only look for gold suppliers. The longer they're gold, the better, um, but, but always looking for gold suppliers. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. And then other than that, I'm looking at the transaction level and the transaction amounts down here, right? So this, this supplier has done six transactions worth $40,000 for meditation pillows, right? So, so this will just show you who's actually selling these things rather than just listing them on Alibaba. And then from here, all we're going to do, guys, is make initial contact with five to ten different suppliers. And Steve, if you can, uh, if you can drop in the negotiation template, um, if you can drop that in Slack too, uh, or I guess just drop it. Yeah, you already got it. This guy. Yeah. This guy doesn't need it. Um, so let me copy this 
template really quickly. You guys have the exact template I use to talk to suppliers in the chat box right now. So you can use that you have my permission but basically what I'm gonna do when I want to find suppliers for products is again I'm looking at gold suppliers with transactions for the product I want and then I'm gonna click uh, you can do it one of two ways you can click compare and just go down and add uh, add all these to a comparison list uh, like this one is not the meditation pillow I'm looking for so I don't want this one right that's like a sleep like a neck pillow um, these are like outdoor pillows. All right, here is a six-year gold supplier with $1.2 million of transactions. Obviously, this is one that I'm going to get in touch with. Um, here's a three-year gold supplier, 20000 with the product. We're going to add that. Uh, we're going to add this one. We're going to add this one. Uh, you can tell I really don't even give this much thought, guys. I'm going through looking for gold transaction levels with the product I want. Uh, like this one has $10. I'll probably skip that one. Uh, 10,000. Um, apparently this one doesn't want to be compared. There it goes. Uh, so we got a few different ones. Again, keep it simple, guys. I'm just looking for gold suppliers with transaction levels that have the product I want. So it looks like I found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven suppliers for this product. So now what I'm going to do is click compare. What this is going to do is bring up all of the suppliers against each other, right? So now I can see all the different MOQs, everything, the pricing, the payment methods, all next to each other. And then what I do now, guys, is I click contact supplier. What this is going to do is literally go through and contact each and every supplier with the exact same message, right? And that's what I do. I'm literally sending the same supplier, uh, same suppliers, the same messages. Uh, obviously, you want to adapt this template a little bit. So instead of saying luxury beauty distributor, uh, we're going to say, I don't know, uh, 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 meditation product distributor. I don't know. Um, selling products within the United States. We're interested in adding meditation pillows to our product lineup and thought your products looked great. My boss, always say my boss, guys. Do not do not introduce yourself to suppliers as the president and CEO of your company, right? You should not be the boss when you're negotiating with suppliers. Uh, you want to position yourself as a uh, purchasing agent, uh, as a secretary, pretty much anything but the boss. There's a lot of cultural reasons behind that. There's a lot of benefits to it. I'm not going to be able to talk about them all today, uh, but just trust me. Do the bo We call it the boss hack. Um, do the boss hack. Uh, my boss would like me to order 10 sample sets or units of this product. Would you be willing to send some top, top quality samples? My boss would also like you to use your Express shipping account. A lot of people right now are probably thinking like, how do I actually ship this product around? Well, all you're going to have to do is tell your supplier that you want them to use their shipping account and then they're going to do it for you. Very simple stuff, guys. Uh, a lot of people get stuck in this business at shipping. Shipping is the easiest part of this business. Uh, when you're first starting out, just tell your supplier to do it for you. And then as you grow, you're just going to call up UPS or something like that, right? Very easy. Let me know what else you need for me to get this sample order shipped. Look forward to working with you, Will. So I literally go and send each and every one of these out, whatever the caption is. So I go and send all of these out, and um, I'm not going to send these out, obviously, because I don't want meditation pillows, but that's how you do it. And again, you have each and every supplier here now has uh, is going to be contacted by this same exact message. At that point, you're going to have people just respond to you, right? They're going to they're gonna send you catalogs with pictures and pricing and things like that, and, um, and then you pretty much just compare those and pull the trigger. Uh, keep in mind that there's tons and tons of different suppliers for every single product out there. Uh, a lot of people spend way too much time trying to find like the best supplier. No such thing as the best supplier, right? This is a partnership. This is a relationship. So go with whoever you think is going to you're going to have the best relationship with and the best partnership with. This is not a transaction, right? We're not going to Walmart and buying some stuff off the shelf. This is a partnership. So choose the partner that you feel best working with out of the five to ten suppliers that you reach out to and, and then pull the trigger. Buy those samples, sell those samples, and most people are already going to be profitable after that point. Um, 
So let's see, is there anything else that we want to talk about before we start wrapping? I think I think you guys I think you got pretty much everything. So as you as you can see, like these businesses are just incredible. Uh, private labeling, I, I can literally go out and get products that are already being produced and just slap my logo, slap my name on it, and build a huge company with passive income behind that. It's absolutely incredible. Guys, 10 years ago, if you wanted to do this business, you're like looking at buying factories and all this crazy stuff. Um, it is just so different now. Private labeling, e-commerce, these businesses are awesome. They are simple. They are safe. Everybody thinks these are just hard businesses. And it makes sense, right? These are physical product businesses. And people, I think, can be intimidated by physical product businesses. But as you guys can see, uh, the, the misconception that this is a hard thing to do or that it's too late to do it or that it's dangerous to do it, these misconceptions create a barrier of entry that is going to prevent competitors coming in against you, right? The great thing about this market is everybody thinks it's hard. So there's not much competition coming in every day because most people don't have the courage to go out there and just get started with this freaking thing. Um, I'm a massively strong believer that if you're still here today at the end of the, the second or the beginning of the third hour, I should say, uh, and we are going to wrap up soon here, but I got a couple more golden nuggets for you. I'm a big believer that if you're still here, you can absolutely build this business. Guys, I hope you're out there taking action already. Uh, obviously, I'm a big fan of anyone that takes notes on these things, but, uh, but if you're taking action, well, that's even better, right? Get out there and take action on this stuff while it's still fresh, while it's still inspiring. Because, guys, what we just did was we consumed information for like two hours, right? To be an entrepreneur, you have to turn consumption into production, things that other people will consume, right? So, so we now need to stop learning and start doing right? That's the challenge now is to take what you've learned and turn it into tangible, transformative results for you and your business. So please remember this, guys. As you're going out there and you're applying this theory to actually change your life and your business, this is not just a theory, right? This is not something I just threw together last night for a webinar. Uh, this is exactly what I did to build my business over many, many years of trial and error. This is exactly what every single one uh, like any big e-commerce entrepreneur out there is using this strategy. Again, guys, just, just knowing that one little golden nugget I gave you today, that, that a product line extension will drive revenue up 15 to 40%, that's something that not many people know. So this will work for everybody. You just got to get out there and get started. That's the challenge, right? As long as you're out there selling, it's going to blow up because you're riding an industry that is going to grow for the next 30 years. So huge, huge opportunity here. What's it all about though? Obviously no one, no one's here today and I hope there's no one here today because you're trying to be the next Jeff Bezos or something, right? All we want to do, or at least all I wanted to do, I got started in this business, guys, because I didn't want to go to school. <laughs> so for me, it, it was never about the money. It was about proving the world wrong and showing them that I myself could make money, that I could make a living for myself on my own hard work, right? I didn't need other people to tell me how to do it. I didn't need other people to control my every move every single day. I didn't need to be monitored to make sure I was being productive. I just wanted to produce. I just wanted to, to have real ownership and control over my life and my destiny. So I don't think anybody here today is like, I need to make $5 million by next week. I think everybody here though wants more free time in the near future. You want, it's not even the money, right? It, it's the freedom that the money affords, that you can go to places around the world that you can't afford right now, that you can take your family members on vacation with you, you know, that you can fly in. Tomorrow I'm going to be hanging out with my family in Florida because we're able to fly them down now, right? So, so it does afford you a better life, but the money is not what it's about. It's about that better life. It's about the transformative result that, that having control over your own destiny will drive for you. So nobody, I don't think anyone's here trying to make $5 million next week. It's about building a business, having a good time while doing it, and a business that allows you to be free, right? Something that you're not controlled by. 
Um, I know a lot of people just are already trapped in the nine to five grind. You've already went through school. You did you did what everyone told you you should do, right? You got the degree, you got the mortgage, you got the job, and now you feel trapped, right? The the classic rat race. So I know for a lot of people, this is about creating side income that's going to be passive income, so that you can slowly transition out of that that the trap that you've set for yourself, right? The six-figure trap of a career. You guys want to break out of that slowly but surely with a side business that generates passive income. I think that's an awesome idea as well. Um, and again, it's just about making the money to live the life of your dreams. For some people, that means traveling all over the world and Airbnbs. For some people, that means buying real estate all over the place and being a real estate investor. For some people, it means you know, like guys, I got I got people that all they want to do is just have a little bit of extra money to, you know, sit around and smoke weed and play games, right? But that's fine because this is what entrepreneurship is all about is it's, it's allowing you to live the life that you want to live despite what everyone else tells you, you can prove them wrong and be truly uh, who you want to be. So that's what entrepreneurship is all about. That's the power of it. No one wants to be an entrepreneur because it's better than the nine to five that, you know, Entrepreneurship will be harder, but it is so much more fun. It is so much more exciting, and that's what it's all about. So I'm not sure why you showed up here today. A lot of you guys are fed up with your current job and want that transition out into your own your own world. Uh, a lot of you guys are already trying to start this business, and you just get caught up, right? There are so many moving parts in this business. There's no other business model have I ever seen that you can fall into more of a black hole on Google, right? You can research your way into a hole in this business, but if you don't if you don't have something to pull you out of that and get you back on track to move the ball down the field, you will be overwhelmed, you will be confused, and you will not get there. Maybe you guys are already rocking the business model. I know five or six people in here I saw already killing it. We got one guy in here who's doing like a hundred grand a month in e-commerce. You guys are already killing it and you just want to move faster, right? You want to get more products, more product lines, things like that. Things like that. Getting a little too passionate here. I'm like choking on my own words. Um, so I hope you really get this one thing, guys. I really do. We've cracked the code on finding beachhead products and turning them into passive income brands selling on Amazon. That's what this is all about, and that's what we have cracked the code on doing. That is what we're doing right now, and it's what so many of our students have already done. Guys, this business model is so near and dear to my heart because, again, like I would probably be on your end right now if it wasn't for private label and e-commerce, right? I would be, you know, sitting in a nine to five job just desperately trying to get out. But luckily I found this business at an early enough age and I just did not give up and figured it out eventually. Um, and it's amazing because again, right now it's growing faster than it ever has before. Uh, I never thought that e-commerce would be as huge as it is right now. Very much a replicable system. Again, we have thousands of clients and students all around the world who are replicating our success in this business model. Again, this is a 90-day rollout plan, guys. 90 days, you should have at least three or three to five products up and selling. That is really where you need to be. Uh, you can make a lot of money doing this and create the freedom you want in a relatively short amount of time. Again, this is a 90-day launch plan. Um, I am not going to be the get rich quick internet marketer who tells you you can make a million bucks next week. Um, this is hard work, right? Entrepreneurship is in general more stressful and harder work than your traditional nine to five job, but the payoff, the upside is so much greater, right? You have real control and real freedom every single day, day in and day out. So that's what I want to see for you guys. Again, it's going to take 60 to 90 days. This is a 90 day launch plan but that is all it should take. You can replace your full-time income. Most people can replace your full-time income selling products on Amazon in 90 days. That is a, a not an ambitious uh, launch plan either. I've seen people do it in 30 days, but 90 days is like as long as it should take. So what happens next? That's the big question. How can you actually go out there and apply this battle-tested strategy to build your e-commerce empire? Well, two options here today. Uh, you got option number one is what I did for many, many years, and I completely understand the people that'll do this. Um, you take what you learned here today, and you keep trying to do everything yourself, right? You you fail your way to success. You keep on beating your head against the wall. But let me tell you guys, I know from experience, you beat your you beat your head against the wall. Eventually, you will break through. Uh, it just hurts a little bit. 
So it took me a long time, many years to do that. Um, what I do now, guys, when I am going into a new business, when I want to roll out a new marketing strategy or something, I do option two, right? I just let other people, other experts personally help me to, to replicate their success. And that's exactly the option you're going to have here today. Uh, you can absolutely do this yourself, guys, you, without a doubt. I did it myself. Hundreds of thousands of people have done this on their own. Uh, the fast track to do this in 90 days, uh, to do it with me, to actually replicate our success and our client's success, uh, that is option two. And that's what I do now, right? Again, back in the day, I was the classic uh, cocky entrepreneur. I thought, you know, I got so much free time. I don't even go to school. I can learn all this on my own. Again, now I just, I just buy my way to the big boys table and I get the right result right off the bat because I know that other people can do this stuff better than me. And I want to like spend time with my friends and family uh, rather than just beat my head against the wall, right? So option number two will get you there. And the real question here today becomes, uh, would you like me to hold your hand over the next nine weeks and launch your first e-commerce brand? Again, I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire in 90 days, but I, but I can tell you that we're going to have three to five products up in your product line by the end of that 90-day period. That is what it is all about. And just, you know, what does it actually look and feel like to work with me? So we've worked with, you know, uh, just, just about 5,000, 6,000 clients now. And um, everything from, you know, brand new entrepreneurs who are just trying to create some side income and get out of the job, all the way up to, you know, we've had, uh, I think we've had three clients now on Shark Tank, at least two, I think three, on Shark Tank. Uh, we had one client win the Shopify Build a Business competition. Uh, so we're, we're seeing people from, you know, the just starting out to people who are literally winning uh, the biggest e-commerce competitions in the world. Um, all within this program. You guys are going to get access to them. You guys are going to be friends with them. I'm telling you, this is this is a, a awesome thing here we got for you. So again, we've helped all sorts of different companies, and through coaching these companies, through building my company, uh, through paying for the coaching and the mentors and all these different people to come in and show me how it's done, well, we've tied all of this up together into a 90-day rollout strategy. Like I said, this is all about building a, a sustainable cash flow generating e-commerce business, selling products on Amazon day in and day out. Um, and it's all about doing it in 90 days. The name of the system is e-commerce imprint. I apologize. I'm starting to lose my voice because I went too long on, uh, on all the training. But So this is called the e-commerce empire training program. This contains everything I know about launching a sustainable, successful, passive income product line on Amazon. That's what it's all about. Starting from scratch, and in 90 days having uh, three to five products in a product line generating passive income on Amazon. That's what it's all about. So everything, you know, this is the, the quote that we're always thinking about when we build out the e-commerce empire training. Everything in life should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. And that's exactly what we try to do. This isn't some guru thing where I'm trying to convince you that I know everything. I am the person who will tell you that I don't know everything, but I do know the people who know the stuff. So we are constantly bringing people in uh, and, and giving you the best information at the right time, right? Because I don't want to flood you with information. I want to help you take the, the actual actions that move the ball down the field. That's what this is all about. So again, we're going to personally take you by the hand, figure out what is that Beachhead product? How do we create a winning brand through that product? How do we launch this thing and actually you know, get the Beachhead to expand out from there? What is the first product we'll expand our product line with? This is all of the stuff that we cover in e-commerce empire in that 90 day rollout. So guys, it's all about just going down the treacherous mountain of starting your own business for yourself on the safe proven trail, right? It's doing it with, with friends beside you and mentors in front of you who have already traveled that path time and time again. And it helps you just avoid this, which is what most people do in entrepreneurship. It's certainly what I did when I first started out. Uh, you look and you see over there, it's like, oh my God, look at that opportunity. I'm going to jump for it. And then you jump and you hope for a soft landing. And every once in a while you get a soft landing, but it certainly usually doesn't work out that way. Usually you end up splatting on the ground and having to start all over again from square one. And that's what this program is about helping you avoid. This is about doing things right the first time and having that business in that 90 day period. So in terms of what you're getting, what actually is the e-commerce empire coaching uh, program. So you're getting the step-by-step -step video training course, right? Uh, the step-by-step -step video training course, this is 
eight modules of milestone-driven, action-oriented training videos and materials. Uh, so again, we got just tons of different stuff that you guys are going to get here. Uh, not only do you get the actual modules, right, tons and I think there's like 100 videos now, um, all milestone-driven and action-oriented. Again, I don't want to just flood you guys with information. I've been through thousands of courses, probably not thousands, but hundreds of courses, and most of the time it's just them trying to convince you that they're gurus, and they'll just flood you with information and hope that you're so confused that you'll just go away. Well, this program is the exact opposite of that. This is the program that I wish I had. It helps you to take the right actions at the right times, and it's going to give you milestones so you actually know when to go on to the next step. Again, the, the main problem I see with people starting businesses is confidence and clarity. And I'm going to give you guys checklists, action items, milestones to keep you laser focused during the journey so you actually know when to go on to the next step to give you that confidence and that clarity, right? So tons and tons of stuff. I literally like just all sorts of different handouts and things like that you're going to get. This has been optimized around the success of over 6,000 alumni students, guys. We've had the e-commerce empire training program has been helping people start these businesses since early 2014. Uh, so this is one of the, the oldest, the most veteran, and the, the largest, most comprehensive training programs for this business model out there because we've been doing it for a long time. We've seen so many people come through and uh, build businesses with this, we know what the pitfalls are. We know uh, where people are going to get stalled. So we're constantly going in and updating this program to, to make sure that your chances of success are even higher, right? So this is constantly being re-updated and re-optimized. Of course, you guys are going to have, you know, the, the updated version of this program at all times. But we're, we're going through all the time, guys, and updating this. Like, again, I don't work day-to-day -day at my e-commerce company anymore. There's 40 people over there that do everything much better than I do. I do strategy. I do, you know, things like that. Um, when we want to have our e-commerce company do something different, I don't go over there and train them. I create training materials for you guys, and that company follows the same training materials you're going to get. So, again, this is updated twice a year, so you are always on the cutting edge, and you have to be because my company depends on this stuff too. So, again, just to give you an idea of what we cover, what are the different modules, uh, in Module 1, we set up your Amazon account correctly and set up that mindset for success. Uh, this sounds like a not very important module, but I promise you guys, if you don't have the right mindset going into this, nothing's going to help you. Uh, we've seen thousands and thousands and thousands of people go through this exact training program and try to launch this business. We know what the right mindset is. We know what the wrong mindset is. So the first thing we're going to do in this program is, yes, get things set up. We need to get your Amazon account set up. We need to get your contact info in there. But we also need to make sure that you are set for success. We need to make sure that your mindset is correct and that you're going to have, uh, you're going to be able to run into this thing and build the business. So module one is all about setting the foundational items for your success. Module two, we go into the actual beachhead product. We're going to find that beachhead product, the one that we're going to use to invade that marketplace and expand out from there. So we're going to turn that beachhead product into a product line and a brand, but first we just need to find the product and start selling it. Uh, module three, we're going to show you how to source that beachhead product. Uh, we'll go over you know, much more in-depth negotiation hacks and things like that. Uh, you guys are going to get all sorts of awesome stuff. Let me see. I can even show you. We said this is going to be a laid-back session, right? So I'll show you guys some stuff that I really shouldn't even show you here. So, like, one thing you're going to get, you know, in Module 3, one thing you're going to get, um, in general, you're going to get the up-to-date version of the Product Research Workbook. To be completely honest, you guys got a older version of the Product Research Workbook today. Uh, it still works awesome, but we have an updated version that we only give out to clients, right? Because so, this is even better. So you're going to get the up-to-date workbook, but you're also going to get this supplier comparison sheet. So you can actually start comparing suppliers, knowing what matters, what doesn't matter. And this is basically the same thing as the product research workbook. It gives you a comparison model. Well, this is going to let you compare and track your different suppliers, right? So we're going to give you that. 
uh, in Module 3, and you'll be able to find the best possible supplier. Module 4, we actually start rolling this stuff out, right? We make those first orders. We make those first sales. I'll show you how to, you know, make sure you'll never get scammed in this business. I'll show you how to make payments correctly. I'll show you how to take money in, get it into your bank account, all that fun stuff, and how to turn this thing into passive income once we start to grow. Module 5, we start to develop a brand around that Beachhead product, right? Uh, most people are very afraid of branding, and it's you know, not surprising because branding is really tough if you're doing it for the first time. Um, I've been building brands, like branding is one of my specialties. It is something I just enjoy doing. Like I said, when I got started, I was a 12-year-old trying to sell products and services to people. So I became obsessed with branding and positioning because, again, in e-commerce, it doesn't matter who's behind the brand. The brand alone creates the perspective. So I'm going to give you guys my private tools for doing this, right? I'm going to give you guys all of my, my private tools here to go through and, and develop brands that will dominate the competition no matter who it is. Uh, this is stuff that's going to, this is stuff I've never given away before, guys, and we are throwing it in the program. This is the stuff that is going to help you get into the, the mind of your customer and really start to, to push their buttons in a way that money is just going to flow out from their pockets, right? So you guys are going to love this. This is going to help you really get into the mindset of who your customer is and what they want. What do they want to see more of? What do they want to see less of? What do they want to feel more of, right? These are the things that we are going to get deep on and really build an effective brand that's going to dominate the competition. And as you guys can see, we've got this down to a science. We've got this down to a science. Module 6, we're going to create a high converting product listing and actually launch our products. Module 7 is all about the launch, our product launch formula. Uh, we even have people from, you know, outside of me, my mentors come in and show you how they're launching their products as well. So you're going to get a really diverse view of multiple different launch strategies that you can use to get your product selling on Amazon. Uh, and then Module 8 is all about scaling up. We start talking about product line expansion, international expansion, expansion on their sales channels, all those sorts of things. Um, so that's the the step-by-step -step training videos and modules you're going to get. On top of that, you do get lifetime access to our private coaching community. And I know a lot of people here are waiting to get in. They're already like, let me in, e-commerce empire. I need this. So I see you guys in the question box. I'm speeding through. We're going to get to it in just a second. Uh, but let me, let me run you through the rest of what you're going to get here. So the private coaching community, you're getting full lifetime access to. Uh, there is no continuity fee. There is nothing like that. You're getting full lifetime access to the most incredible coaching community you are ever going to see. Uh, the coaching community is literally, guys, I told you we have 6,000 clients who have went through and launched these businesses successfully. Well, every single one of them almost is, is in the private coaching community, and they're all waiting. It is a, a tight-knit, intimate group, and it is an extremely active group. I think on average every day we probably see 50 to 100 posts in that group. It is really where the cutting edge of the industry happens. And this is where people help each other, not only to grow their businesses, but also to get started. Because again, each and every person in this private coaching community has used the exact e-commerce empire strategy you're going to use, but they used it like a year ago, right? So you guys are getting an even more up-to-date and even more fleshed out launch strategy, and you have thousands of people who have already done it to help you through it. So the private coaching community is honestly, in my opinion, uh, just as valuable as the training videos. And this is lifetime access too. So even as your business is going a million a year, two million a year, whatever it is, you still have the private coaching community and uh, it's, it's lifetime access to see what other people are doing to push incredible amounts of sales. So again, you got the step-by-step -step video training. You got the private coaching community. Uh, I am going to give you my personal set of tools and templates here today as well. Uh, like I said, I got all sorts of different things I'm going to give to you guys. Pretty much every tool that I've developed to build this business, I'm just going to hand it over to you guys. So some of the tools that you're going to get, you're getting our product research workbook. Like I said, uh, the most up-to-date version of the product research workbook that is so much uh, even simpler than the one I gave you today. Uh, this new product research workbook is pretty awesome. You're going to get the supplier comparison and tracking sheet, the brand builders worksheet that I've never given out before. You'll get that as well. Um, and tons of templates as well, right? Email scripts. You're going to get negotiation scripts, uh, email follow-up scripts to send out to your customers. You can just copy and paste and use exactly what we've been using. Uh, promotional inserts to put inside your products. We're going to give you that. 
legal contracts, agreements, guys, pretty much anything you want, right? We're running these businesses. So if there's some tool that you don't have and you want it from us, well, just let us know. We're going to give it to you. Uh, this is truly like behind the scenes access. Everything that we're doing, you're getting uh, full access so you can model that same result. So um, the last thing in the e-commerce empire training program I want to tell you about is the exclusive VIP discounts. Uh, we got discounts on pretty much every top e-commerce tool out there. Um, the way we have built this program, you are not going to have to spend any more money to get this, right? So I'm not going to tell you to go get all these crazy tools right off the bat, but I know a lot of people want the tools. So we have gone out to each and every one of the owners of each of these e-commerce tools, and we have the best discount in the world on these tools. So you will not see better prices on any tool out there. Uh, because we have contractually the best price out there. So you guys are going to get full access to our discount database, and that is a huge value because, again, if you're, if you're going to use any e-commerce tool out there, I guarantee you we have the best discount possible for it. So you guys are getting access to that as well. Once again, that's the step-by-step -step video training, lifetime access to the private coaching community, my personal database of tools and templates like the product research workbook, brand builders workbook, all that stuff. Um, as well as all of those VIP discounts. You're getting lifetime access to our VIP discount database. So that is pretty much the e-commerce empire coaching program, guys. Uh, I do have two bonuses that we're going to throw in, and these are both new bonuses. So if you've been on our webinars before, this is going to be 100% new. Um, guys, let me take you through these bonuses. The first bonus is pretty awesome. The second bonus is, is outrageous. This might be the only time you see this because I don't know if I can keep up with this, but we're going to do it for you guys, and that might be it. But bonus number one is our VIP coaching sessions. You guys are going to get access, instant access here today to 40-plus different guest expert VIP coaching session replays. And this is where, like I said, guys, I am not... I am not a guru. I don't know everything in the world, but I know lots of people. My network is, you know, as, as Ty Lopez says, my net worth is my network. My network is my net worth. So I know tons of people, and if, if there's something that we just don't know, if you have a question that we just can't figure out, then we will go pay people to come in and teach us, right? So we're constantly bringing in guest experts to not only train you, but to train me and my team as well. So here's just a small preview of, again, this is a small preview of some of the VIP coaching sessions that you're going to get access to here today, instantly, right now. How to get ungated and approved to sell in all major Amazon categories. We're going to cover that. You're going to be ungated and good to go. Creating and optimizing high converting product listings. Optimal business structures and LLCs for Amazon sellers. So what is the correct uh, business structure for an Amazon seller? We got that all covered. Even for foreign sellers that are outside of the United States and they want to sell into the United States, right? Most of my clients, any of my clients that are outside of the United States, they sell in the United States. And that's why they're making so much money because the, the U.S. marketplace is the consumer marketplace, right? So even as a foreign seller, you can sell into the United States as long as you have this, as long as you actually know how to run through and quick, quickly set up your business structure takes like you know a day at the most but uh, but now you're able to take advantage of the biggest marketplace in the world bookkeeping and accounting outsourcing and automation uh, everything from virtual assistance to software automation refunds returns reimbursements launching new products from scratch and climbing the search rankings how to drive five-star feedback and recurring orders from new customers I mean guys I in-depth vetting of Asian suppliers I can go through this all day because there are uh, so many more guest expert bonus sessions that we've done because again I want to bring in the best of the best to teach not only you but to teach me too so this is how we're growing our businesses is this coaching program as well tons of guest experts I'm not gonna spend much time on this so many guest experts I'm sure some of you guys have heard of the names on here right Scott Mitchell the CTO of Home Shopping Network the CEO of RollingStone.com formerly Porter Arisman, the vice president of Alibaba, Noah Kagan, celebrity entrepreneurs. Uh, we, we bring in some very, very high-level people, and they typically charge us lots of money to do it. So, uh, But we're fine doing that. Now, guys, bonus number two is crazy. Uh, I might not ever do this again. We're going to do this for this session today and um, see how it works because this, this could be suicidal for me. 
But we are going to offer today, and perhaps today only, unlimited live training sessions. Unlimited live training sessions. Unlimited live training sessions. So bonus two here, guys, is our Get Shit Done weekly power hour trainings. Because, guys, we can spend so much time going through training and consuming, right? We can consume lots of information, but what is missing is action from a lot of people and getting shit done. So what we do is we get together once a week and we are going to spend at least an hour together showing you exactly what is working in our business, exactly what's working in our clients' businesses, and this is what's going to keep you on the cutting edge of this industry. So you're getting unlimited access, like never-ending access, guys, with no additional fees to all of our upcoming weekly training calls. These are high-level, behind-the-scenes training on what's working now. Again, this is from myself and my team. Uh, as well as my mentors and some of our most successful students. Really, when we find a strategy that we want you to know about, we're, we're going we're gonna to push it out to you guys through these weekly training calls, right? Uh, we have cash prize giveaways every single week on these unlimited live training calls. So again, uh, you guys might be the only people that get unlimited access to these training calls because we're going to see what happens here. As you can see, this is crazy. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, jaw dropped just saying it right now, but this is unlimited live training, guys. Cash prize giveaways every single week. These are going to be every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, we are going to get together for at least an hour, but probably like two hours. And uh, we're going to go over training. We're going to get as many questions as we can answered. They're not coaching calls, right? It's not like I'm going to sit there the whole time and just answer questions because I want to show you guys what's working. Uh, I want to show you, I want to inspire you guys with what is working in my business and in everyone's businesses, right? So we do some coaching there, but they are not coaching calls. They are training calls. And they're every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Guys, the first GSD Power Hour session is going to be on July 18th. So you guys are going to get unlimited access. Since you're getting in before July 18th, you're getting unlimited access to all GSD Power Hour calls. So you know, like a year from today, two years from today, you are still going to have access to our weekly training calls that we're going to continue to do. And again, I know that's crazy, and that might be the only time you ever see that offered because uh, that's, that's a crazy one. Uh, so just to wrap it all up, guys, what are you actually getting? You're getting the step-by-step -step video training, the private coaching community, unlimited lifetime access to that. You're getting my personal database of tools and templates, the workbooks, the tracking, the comparison, and all that. Uh, you're getting all of the VIP discounts, and this is lifetime access. So even in the future, as we're adding more discounts, you're always going to have access to the best discounts in the industry. Uh, two bonuses we're throwing in here today. All VIP coaching sessions, so you're getting all of the VIP coaching replays of all the coaching sessions that we've done in the past on everything in there. And then uh, you're also getting unlimited access to the GSD Power Hour training calls. These start on July 18th and will be uh, one to three hours, probably an average of two hours, where we actually get together every week, do some high-level training, as well as inspire and get us all on track and getting shit done again. So, guys, that is the the e-commerce empire training program and uh, and again this is the craziest offer we've given and uh, this might be the only time you see it because as you can see there's some unlimited things in here that that scare me honestly but we're gonna do it for you guys uh, this is all coming with a 90-day money-back guarantee guys we used to do a 30-day money-back guarantee but again like uh, we got the e-commerce company it's not like we need this money so what I want to do for you guys this is a 90-day launch plan with a 90-day money-back guarantee. I can't make it much better than this, guys. So 90-day money-back guarantee on this 90-day launch plan. Uh, yeah, guys, this is a, a great system. This is a great training program, and as you've heard, like this is meant to get you results quicker than any other system out there. So if you are in this program and you don't see success in the first 90 days of this program, then I am begging you, I am begging you to get a refund because if you're not having success, I don't deserve your money, right? The, the reason you're getting into this program is because this program will take you towards success. And yes, you're going to have to work a little bit, but, but the program is good enough to where 90 days, if you're putting in the time, you should be there. So again, uh, there's no hoops to jump through. You don't have to prove to me that you did anything. Like you can email me and just say, hey, Will, you know, your voice got really annoying on uh, week four and uh, I just want a refund. 
you can you can email me and say, hey, you know, I just made three hundred thousand dollars, but it's day ninety and I'm gonna retire, so get a refund, right? I just don't care, guys. Ninety day money back guarantee, no questions asked, a hundred percent money back guarantee. There is no hoops to jump through. I'm putting all the risk on me and the startup bros team because we know that this stuff works. Uh, big results that I'm not going to show you because I know lots of people here are waiting to get in, but I could show you little charts and stuff all day, uh, you know, some all-star students and things like that. Uh, I will show you really quickly. I mean, we can jump into the Facebook group and just see what people are posting recently, um, and we'll see what kind of results people are having. By the way, you'll notice that my face is starting to glisten more and more. It is now about 96 degrees in my office with a uh, I got a photo light on and <laughs> it's getting hot. Um, so let's jump in really quickly. I'm just going to roll through this, guys. But let's go to the super secret e-commerce empire coaching community. And let's see just what kind of success people are having. We'll go to the photos. Uh, again, guys, I'm literally just going to click posts here. I'll click like five, let's say. So one, two, uh, three. Oh, wait, that's from eBay. I know that works. Three, four, um, let's do one more, five. So I got five random posts here, guys. Obviously, this is live. I don't think anyone thinks this is a replay at this point. But uh, So this is all live. Let's just see what people are posting in the last week or two in the coaching community. So here's Paul D'Estrella. He said, the power of visualization and the law of attraction and hard work equals reward. I've had my account for one year, and this has been my biggest month, and it's been my biggest day so far. Uh, I keep working hard researching. Thanks again, Startup Bros. I will hit 100K per month. Mark my words. If your goal doesn't intimidate, it's not big enough. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, he, so Paul D'Estrella has, what, he's making about two grand a month right now. Just got started recently. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, two grand a month, that's just there. So he's making about 500 bucks a day, it looks like. 500 bucks a day uh, just selling on Amazon, so that's great. And I would say that's a very typical result. 500 bucks a day is not that crazy. Um, Jasmine Chosky said, looking like it's going to be a great month so far, not even halfway through, nice to hit over 10,000. Started this business in December 2016. So she got started about seven months ago exactly, uh, in seven months, she has built it up to about 10000 a month in sales. Oh, I'm sorry, this is just in like 10 days. So in 10 days, she's getting about 1000 bucks a day now. She's getting, you know, 1200 here. So, so Jasmine, it took her about seven months to get up to a point where she's making over $1,000 a day in this business. That is awesome. So that's great to see. Here's EJ Ball. He said, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is killing me. He said, uh, well, the numbers are in for May, our first $100,000 of sales. Since early 2016, we set our goal to sell $100,000 a month by my 30th birthday. Uh, now it's officially in the books, and it's certainly our biggest business milestone. So these guys, it looks like um, got started about since early 2016, so it took them a little over a year to do it. A little over a year, and they are set. Guys, I mean... A hundred grand a month is one point two million dollars a year. So in in a year and a half, EJ went from zero, having never sold anything online before in their lives. They ha they have now one point two million dollars in annual projected sales. That is again, I, I you have to put in the work to get those results, but that is not a untypical result there. Uh, Jim Cutler, as you can see, guys, all of these posts are like the same numbers, 10,000, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000. These are the milestones, right? The past month was a big milestone for me. It was not only my best month, but my first $10,000 month. Uh, I had more sales than that, $11,000 for the month. Awesome stuff. And he ran out of stock. It took him about two years, but, um, but put it on the back burner for a little while. Once he got started again, $11,000 a month now. That's crazy. Here's John Ramsier, and this is the last one we'll look at, guys. He said, while on vacation in Switzerland, I broke the six-figure-a-month club, or is it the seven-figure-a-year club? Yeah, again, $100,000 a month is $1.2 million a year. So it took him about a year to get to $1.2 million in sales. And again, uh, 100 grand a month in a year is, is you know, I'm not going to say it's average, but it's pretty typical. We see that very often. So let's let's get out of all this stuff. Let's let's actually get started on the business, right? So what's going to cost to get started in this thing? 
Well, these courses are obviously very expensive right now. They're going for at least $2,000. I, charge, uh, I used to charge $5,000 to teach this one-on-one. -on -one. Could not keep up. Guys, why couldn't I keep up? Well, if you go to Google.com and you Google import from China, the first thing that comes up is StartupRose.com. <laughs> so we have millions of people a year now coming to us trying to get help to start these types of businesses. I just can't do it one-on-one -on -one anymore. There's just too many people. So we don't do this one-on-one -on -one anymore. But when we did many thousands of dollars. cost me much more than $10,000 to actually learn this thing. I lost many, many tens of thousands of dollars. Thousands of hours to learn it, right? I sacrificed my educational career to figure out this business model. So many, many hours. Tons of coaches in there, tons of success, as you guys have seen. So what is it actually going to cost you to get in and start this sucker from scratch? Not $10,000, not $5,000. Uh, the program is $29.97, guys. The program is $29.97. I do have a discount in store for you guys today. Uh, again, you, you're, you're on the tail end of a three-hour webinar. You guys are badasses, and you guys deserve a discount. The reason we give this discount, guys, is because you just went through the master class that sets the foundation to, to build this business. So the fact that you went through this webinar shows me that you have what it takes, and you're going to be an easier person for me to work with than a lot of other people. So I'm going to give you 50% off. That is our live attendee discount for today. 50% uh, off, lifetime access, unlimited training, all these crazy things. So guys, big discount for live attendees today. 50% off. Uh, this will be good until, um, this will be good until Friday night. Let's say that. So on Friday night, um, we are going to turn this off. And I'm sorry, I'm just making a note here. So we actually, right now the discount will end on Thursday. But let me make one quick change here and make sure that it does not. So you guys, all right, you guys will now have until Friday to do this. Sorry, I'm just updating the slide. So guys, your coupon code to redeem all of these discounts, all of these bonuses is LIVE50 right there, L-I-V-E-5-0. Just use the LIVE50 coupon code, and that is going to not only secure 50% off the list price, but also redeem all of the bonuses we talked about here today. And guys, you have a special set of bonuses today, so please use that coupon code or else you will not get the unlimited live training. Um, so right now, guys, let's actually jump in and get it done. If we head over to startupros.com slash empire, this is going to give you the page to reserve your spots in the e-commerce empire training program. So here it is. All you got to do here, guys, is uh, type in, obviously, your name and your email. Uh, make sure you type in the live 50 coupon code. Very important. Uh, when you click apply coupon here, you're going to see both of the prices get cut in half, okay? So there you go, live 50, it is applied, and the prices are all cut in half now. Um, you can see a nice little summary of everything you're going to get on the side here. And, um, and yeah, guys, I didn't even mention this yet, but guys, how much better can I make it for you guys? You guys got 90-day money-back guarantee with a 90-day launch plan, and you're able to join with a five-month installment plan, guys. So you can actually space out your investment across five months. And yes, the reason we have that set up is so you can hustle a little bit and, and pay off the cost of the program with the profits from the program, right? So you got a 90-day launch plan with a five-month installment plan. That gives you instant lifetime access to everything we've talked about here today for under $374. And guys, that is literally the best we can do here. 90-day, oh man. So uh, the last thing, guys, uh, you do have this guest access pass right here. So if you're launching your business with a friend or a business partner, the guest pass will give them their own access to the unlimited training calls, their own access to the community, uh, their own username and password, all that fun stuff. And that's basically a buy one, get one at an extreme discount. That is your option if you want to add that. And, um, and finally, you can select between PayPal or credit and uh, do whatever you want to do there. So... That is pretty much the show here today, guys. So once again, you got the link in the chat. Uh, I think Steve's got the link in the chat, startupbros.com slash empire. Just head there. That's where you're going to reserve your spot. And uh, guys, live 50 coupon code with all of those bonuses, 50% off with all of those bonuses we talked about. That's going to be available until Friday night. Friday night, that gets cut off. And guys, I do not know if you will ever see the unlimited live training offered again. Uh, we're going to see what happens. Obviously, that's crazy. I'm going to make it happen for you guys, but I don't know, I don't know how much longer we're going to offer that. So 
Uh, got the coupon code. Guys, there's a bunch of different ways to get in touch with us. You got our phone number here. You got our email address here. You can also go to startupbros.com slash empire and chat with uh, me or my team in the bottom right here. And um, and that's, that's pretty much the show here today, guys. That's pretty much the show. Uh, so we're going to jump over, and if we have any additional questions that Steve didn't get, we're going to start answering those. We'll hang out for a few extra minutes with you guys. And, um, and with that, guys, you did it. You did it. It was a three-hour webinar, and that's incredible. Give me a quick one or a two in the question box, by the way. Give me a one if this was one of the top five most valuable presentations you've ever seen, and give me a two if it's not. Awesome. All ones. Yeah, you guys, look at that. Awesome stuff. Standing ovation. That's, that's how I'm interpreting these ones. Standing ovation. Uh, awesome stuff, though. Well, thank you guys for being here. I, I give you ones right back because it's impressive to, again, guys, there are so many distractions in our world today, right? God knows how many notifications I got since I, tur since I turned over my phone, right? Um, as entrepreneurs, if you're going to accomplish anything great in life, you have to escape the distractions that the mainstream person lives in, like this. Um, so the fact that you guys were able to go through a three-hour presentation today and pay attention and take notes, you guys are going to make it. Don't give up because you guys have what it takes. Whether it's in our program or not in our program, this is impressive stuff, and you guys are impressive people. So thanks for being here. And um, Steve, I guess, I guess I will stop ranting, and we can answer any additional questions here. <laughs> we enjoy your rants. We enjoy your rants. Well, let's see. I know these, this question box is going to blow up in a minute now, especially uh, since everyone knows we're doing this. And we kept a lot of you to the end, so it was a very engaging presentation, Will. Um, yeah, I, I told you to be laid back and a little bit of fun, so hopefully I didn't, uh, didn't underwhelm. <laughs> No, I, I think you did a great job. Gotten a lot of ones in the box here. Here's one from Natalie. Natalie wanted to know how much time per day would you say we should be able to devote uh, devote to this during the first 90 days? Natalie is asking the right questions here. I love it. Um, Natalie, yeah, great question. We found that five to ten hours a week is kind of the bare minimum. Um, so if you if you can't even find five hours a week to work on this thing. Sounds like sounds like you shouldn't be adding things to your plate, right? You got to get some things off your plate. So um, five to ten hours a week, I think, is really the bare minimum to have success with this program, from what we've seen. And um, the optimal amount, it, the interesting thing is, the optimal amount, the people that make the most money with us, um, we see them putting about 20 hours a week in. So it's not like you have to put 70, 80 hours a week in to have success here. Uh, the most successful people we see are putting 20 hours a week in. And that was a really strange thing when we found that out because I'm the kind of guy that I used to want to work 80, 90 hours a week every week. And then once we started uh, actually bringing in coaching clients and training clients and things like that, we started to see that the people that worked less were being more successful. Um, so I, I think 20 hours a week is really optimal, but 5 to 10 hours a week minimum. All right. Very good. Very good. <laughs> And Natalie says, thanks. Uh, ready to make the change? 20 is doable. That's yeah, right. that'll definitely work then. Like one of our, one of our uh, not even our most successful client, but one of our clients that I've just become really good friends with, um, let me bring up his post really quick. But he actually started this business while he was in uh, medical school. So he was going through medical school, through residency, working in an emergency room, like 18-hour shifts and stuff. and um, and he got started about a year and a half ago, and I will show you in a moment, if I can find his post, this group is just so active that it can be tough to find, <laughs> it can be tough to find things over again because it is freaking active. Um, let me see. But he just, he became a doctor and retired the same day. Uh, through this program. So he, he's a guy that was in medical school. He uh, did residency, like I said, uh, working 18 hour shifts. I don't know where the guy found the time, but somehow he launched like a, like what's now like a three or five million dollar business um, in a year while at med school. And that, that was the first person we saw doing like 20 hours a week that we said, man, if this guy's doing this big numbers off 20 hours a week, uh, maybe, maybe this whole work hard till you die thing, uh, it might be a little inaccurate.
But uh, I'll try to find his post for you, Natalie, just because it's really impressive. And, um, yeah, we'll see if I can bring that up. Cool. Yeah, John says, plenty of work with. Thanks for the info. Hope you got a ton of notes, John. Yeah, here's, here's this post. Check this out. Ben said, uh, retiring from my career as a physician to run my business. For a year and a half, I've been looking forward to the, my retirement from medicine, and that day has finally come. Announce your future and past retirement dates in the comments. Uh, again, this community is just so awesome. This is nothing like most of these little internet marketing course communities. Uh, it is so tight knit. We're like going to events with each other. We're going to China with each other. As you can see, guys, 174 likes on this post in a private coaching community. So just crazy. Um, I can go through here. I, I really actually want to go through these comments. Um, so I'll, I'll just scroll through some of these comments, and you guys can see. Like, there's been probably at least 50 to 100 people in this comments um, that have been able to quit their job and, and work on their business full time and actually change their life uh, through this training program. And that's, that's like the, the ultimate achievement for us, right? We, we love people quitting their jobs and dropping out of college. That's what we want to see. Yeah, I like this comment in here. Isaac says, how ironic. I just realized I was taking notes in a notebook that I got from my employer. I guess they gave you the tools of their own destruction, right? There you go. That's all it well, takes, though, right? That's all it takes is pen and paper and a little bit of a uh, little bit of inspiration. That's it. That's it. Um, and I have a lot of questions coming in here, guys. Uh, I think we're going to try and get every single one of these. Uh, we'll stick around as long as we can. Uh, probably end up going a little bit long, but that is okay. How about this one? Will, could you, Will, uh, Mark wanted you to clear something up. He asked, how do we get access to the coaches? Is it by phone or how does that work? So most of the coaching in this program is going to happen in the coaching community. Uh, we used to be able to do coaching with like individual people, but what we actually found, and I'm actually, uh, I'm going to write a blog post and some videos about this soon. Um, I'm actually getting to a point where I would say that having a one-on-one -on -one coach is actually a bad thing for most entrepreneurs. Uh, I've done one-on-one -on -one coaching. I know tons of people that do one-on-one -on -one coaching, and I, I just don't like what it breeds, right? Coaching breeds dependency, and I don't like to see that. Like colleges breed dependency. Jobs breed dependency. This is what I'm trying to fight against. So I'm going to train you to be a self-reliant entrepreneur that, yeah, you can get coaching, you can get help from many different people, and I'll help you connect to people and network, but we're not going to call it coaching because coaching is, self, is, is dependence, and I don't want to see any – there's no such thing as a dependent entrepreneur, right? You have to be self-reliant. You have to be a go-getter. So I don't like the fact that with coaching, like the progress of your business is determined by someone else. Uh, what if that person uh, is hungover? What if they just don't want to work that day, right? Um, so, so I'm actually against coaching. Um, I am for consulting. I'm for training. I'm for education. But I am against one-on-one -on -one coaching for that reason, dependency. Um, it's the same reason I'm against college because college teaches you that you can just depend on them. Coaching is the same thing. So we have coaches. We have tons of people that are so active in this community. Um, you will, you will have to take some action, though. Like, if you, if you post in here, you'll get answers. Uh, I'm in here answering questions. We're on the unlimited weekly training calls answering questions. But I don't want to set an expectation for you that there's one-on-one -on -one coaching in this because not only do we not do that, but I actually think it's a bad thing for entrepreneurs. So that's um, my view on coaching. So, so you are going to get some help like that. You will get, like, answers to your questions. And when you run into roadblocks, you know, we have a massive community that's there to help, and our whole company's in there trying to help, obviously. Um, but I do want to really set expectations clear that I am anti-coaching, pro-education, uh, anti-coaching. Yeah, it's sort of like, um, what's that dependence thing? I like the comment here, Jared said, coaches to breed dependency, college bre colleges to breed dependency, jobs breed dependency. Great point. And I look at it in the way that, 
you know, if you're teaching, say, a child to do something, you don't want to do everything for them. You know, in fact, it's they never you never really learn until you make the mistakes yourself. So yeah. uh, I think that's the and plus, quite honestly, the guys who've done best in our group, yeah, they've asked for a little coaching, but most of the time they just got in there and got their hands dirty. A lot Great of point. people who want coaching really just want to ask every like they kind of want permission to try things. That's kind of what we've seen. So. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so that that's our view of coaching in a nutshell. I had one other point that I forgot, but that's okay. <laughs> ah, and so it'll come to you, buddy. It'll come to you. Um, well, let me scroll up here. Uh, I want to make sure I didn't miss any of your questions. Yeah, and uh, it's, uh, sorry. The last thing I was gonna say too, Jared just reminded me. Yeah, like Jared said, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. That's exactly what we're trying to do. And guys, as you've seen throughout this entire presentation. I am not your traditional internet marketer, right? I am an entrepreneur. I build businesses. I, you know, I do not do this whole thing where I try to convince people. Like most people I see doing coaching, they're e they're egoists, right? They are so caught up in their own ego that they just want to show everyone how much they know. Uh, I I want to I want to take down the entire college system. I want to take down the entire idea of a of a nine to five job. So uh, my goal is not to convince you that I'm really smart or a guru or a coach or anything. Uh, my goal is to move the ball down the goddamn field, and that's what we do in this program. Thanks, Skippy. How about this one, Will? Uh, this comes from Benjamin. Uh, okay, I see. Please tell us something about the BSR cheat sheet. So that was a little something in the product research workbook. So BSR cheat sheet is uh, just actually this is what some of our algorithm works off of. So we update this pretty often. This basically shows you what the BSR means in different categories, right? So for instance, if you're selling in the baby niche and you have a BSR of 1,600, that would mean you're selling 20 units a day. Uh, if you have 3,100 in the baby category, then you're selling 10 units a day. So this is just a really easy way to translate a BSR to unit sales because we really want products that are going to sell 10 to 20 units per day. Um, if we can get, like guys, here's what no one realizes about this business. If you can get five products up and those five products sell 20 units a day, 10 to 20 units a day on average, you are making over a million dollars a year on average. So people think that you have to have like just all these crazy bells and whistles. All we want is five products, good product line, good branding, and selling between 10 and 20 products a day. We are going to make a million dollars a year. So again, like people make this way more complicated than it needs to be. But that's basically what the BSR cheat sheet is. Bada boom. How about this one? Isaac asks, with Amazon's, <clears throat> excuse me, with Amazon's change in terms of service, how do you recommend a new sellers get initial reviews on new products? Uh, uh, you know, I, I'm, I think you're over, you're overthinking it, my man. You're overthinking it. Again, yeah. the brain, the brain plays a game where it tries to prevent you from taking action or making any effort. So now you, you're, you're, you're inspired. You're ready to take action. And now your brain has said, but wait, what about the terms and service changes? Now, now you're going to go research terms and services, all this stuff. Uh, trust me, I mean, there's thousands of people launching products like day in and day out. Um, the, the review market has not changed much. You can't do certain types of giveaways, um, but, but I mean, getting initial reviews on the product is really easy. And all you need is like five to 10 reviews. Once you have five to 10 reviews, we can start running PPC on it, and then we just start pumping it up. So it's simple stuff. Terms of services did not change much in terms of the launch. Yeah, and besides, you don't want to give away those type of freebies that they banned anyway. Uh, ideally, you want to sell these things at a full profit instead of just throwing money away, really, to try to buy reviews on a listing. Like, get the sales first, and then the reviews will come. But uh, people do often put way too much uh, emphasis on getting reviews in the first place. Though it does help, but it's not the most important thing. Yeah, for sure. And then while we're doing this, I think we got like three questions left. I am going to go through this post right here from June 21st, just a couple weeks ago. We're going to see how many people posted in here that have already been able to quit their nine to five job with this training program. 
So obviously Ben is one of them. He's doing like three to five million a year now in a year and a half. Crazy, crazy result there. Uh, but I'm just going to go through. Like here's Kyle uh, quit his nine to five job. He must have been one of our really early people. Um, let's see. But yeah, we can go through here. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna find some more. Uh, some more job quitters here. But uh, but Steve, I know we have like three or four more questions, so we can knock those out while I do it. Yeah. How about this um, question from Ed? Ad, Ad Joma, I think. How swiftly do you respond to questions of your clients once they begin your training if they have questions to be addressed? Let me let me show you. I, I will not even tell you, my friend. I will show you. And um, I will show you, and your mind will be blown. So let's look at um let's look at our team report for the last 12 months. So here's how many emails are getting answered, my friend. Um, so we answer a lot of support emails, a lot of support emails. We have very, very good support in this program. As you can see, our, our you know satisfaction scores are always through the roof. And, um, and pretty much our entire team here uh, answers questions. So again, it's not a coaching program. I, I want to make clear that there's no one-on-one -on -one coaching in this. I, I think coaching is bad for new entrepreneurs. Like, there's no way I'm going to do it. Um, but support is necessary. Support is necessary. Training is necessary. Uh, weekly catch-ups are necessary. And that's why we're going to get together for, for weekly training calls. But I'm not going to set, I'm not going to ruin you by saying I'm going to coach you to success. There's no such thing as that. It's fake, guys. It's, the, it's just as fake as when you go to college and they tell you you're going to be successful because you went to college. Uh, coaching is a mirage. It's a sham, right? So I'm not going to tell you that I'm going to coach you. Uh, I'm going to give you top-notch support. I'm going to answer you extremely quickly. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a huge database of thousands of people who have been successful already that will help you to be successful. I'll give you all the training, upgraded training from what they use to be successful. I'm going to give you all the tools, all the workbooks. Uh, I'm, I'm literally giving you everything I can. So uh, I, I want to be really clear. Again, it's not one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I mean, we're, we're helping thousands and thousands of customers every single day. Um, and it's our entire team doing it. I'm jumping in doing it. Steve's doing it. Our entire team is answering. Uh, there, there's really, you know, again, we get a lot of emails, so I'm not going to say, oh, I'm going to respond to your email in an hour. Um, but if, if we're on a weekly training call and you send me an email and you tell me that you sent me an email, I'll say, all right, I'm going to go check that email. Um, so again, fast, awesome support to get you through this program. Uh, so when you get stuck, like we're going to be there to help. Uh, but again, we don't do coaching. Great. Great. Uh, Jared wanted to know here, he wanted to know private labeling, how can I get a label design? Do I send potential labels to the supplier or do I just send them design and uh, who do you recommend to do these designs? Um, for labels and whatnot, uh, you can use anyone really. Again, we have some templates in there. 99designs is going to be the best place to get that stuff done, but it is also the most expensive. Uh, between some template and 99 designs there's about a thousand different ways to get this stuff done so um, you know you can go through Fiverr you can go through private designers uh, again what I would probably do is jump in the coaching community and just ask people hey what designers have you used that you really like working with like again Dr. Ben's running a five million dollar business uh, you can like message him right now and say, hey, can I get your package designer and he'll give it to you, right? Uh, this is a true support network for being successful in this business model. So um, uh, again, like your success in this is really going to be determined by how much you hustle because look at this, guys. I mean, uh, just the community alone is minting millionaires. So um, you, you, you got to get in there and you know ask these questions in the group and things like that. Make sure you're introducing yourself in the group super uh, intimate, super just very nice and helpful group of people. Um, but, but again, you got to get in there and ask some questions. We do have recommended designers, though, like I said. Um, I think also, I mean, what, we have four or five VIP discounts on different um, insert designers and photographers and things like that, too. So, again, there's just so many different ways to get these things done. Um, the, the bigger 
again, our, our training program takes you through the right steps at the right times because if you just research how to get labels designed, you'll just research how to get labels designed. You won't get a label designed. So our program shows you how to do it when you're first starting as well as kind of what to transition into as you build your business. Cool. Jared says, awesome. Thanks for the answer. And uh, how about this one? Uh, Terry wanted to know, how long do I have access to the training materials and community? Is there a cutoff point at all? Um, it is lifetime access. You're getting lifetime access to the most up-to-date version of the training program. You're getting lifetime access to the community. And, and the big thing that we might not ever offer again is unlimited access to the weekly training calls. Uh, the weekly training calls are going to start on July 18th and you guys are going to get unlimited access to that. So uh, pretty much for life. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to say lifetime because if, you know, 10 years from now, I probably won't still do those. But, um, but for the entirety uh, years of training calls, you're getting unlimited for free with that bonus today. Bada boom. That is it. And let me see if I have any other questions. Yeah, this last one. Uh, what about refunds? Toby wanted to know, does the refund policy still apply to the five-month plan? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it is still 90 days. So, you know, if, if just, you know, if you're, if you're really strapped for cash or something, guys, uh, just set a calendar notification 89 days from today. Um, that, that would be the best thing to do. Um, but I, I do think once you get in there, uh, the reason why we can offer these crazy guarantees and these crazy discounts is because the program is so good and the community is so good. I think once you get in there, even if people are planning on refunding, right, uh, once you get in there, you're not going to want to because you just can't get this type of atmosphere anywhere else. That's really it. It's a good group of people. And uh, I'm scouring through the bottom of my list here. So I guess we'll make a last call. Uh, drop in any final questions you have in there, and we'll knock them out. And I guess, I guess then we'll wrap this bad boy up after that. Sounds good. Yeah, we got Visa Vasil here. Also quit his job two months ago. That's good. Yeah, tons of people in here though. But yeah, ask it up, ask it up. Susanna's quitting her job. Nice. Emily quit her job. Good stuff. Awesome. All right. I didn't. I didn't mean to distract from the questions. We can. We can knock out the questions too. No, that's that's There's all right. Another one, Stephen Duncombe. We just saw him in Florida too. He came out to one of our events at uh, at my house actually. So there's him. I was surprised when he had an accent. Yeah, I right. I, I thought he was a U.S. seller for some reason, but yeah. But uh, uh, all right, let's yeah, let's we'll we'll do more questions. I'm just happy about all these job quitters. So, Will, you're like the uh, you're like the proud parent who like rams pictures of their kids in their face. Like, look at my kids. I'm so proud. <laughs> Uh, okay, what about this one? Mark wanted to know uh, if you could help him on this. He said the launch difficulty tab on the sheet doesn't work. Any suggestions on what might be the problem? Uh, the only reason the launch difficulty score won't work is if you are not running it in Google Sheets. Um, you know, if, if you put something random in the category here, it won't be able to calculate. So it'll say this not found thing. Um, that's really it though. Anything else, it usually means you're trying to use it in Excel and not Google Sheets. This is for Google Sheets specifically. There's a bunch of code in the back end that actually runs this. It's not just a spreadsheet. So um, so it can only work in Google Sheets. Cool. Yeah, that should help you out, Mark. We tried. Excel does not like us. Um, well, let me see. Okay, here, I have another question, Will, for you. Jared asks, what's the time frame from the moment that an order's placed on Alibaba and when you get the items in the U.S. and then to the uh, FBA warehouse? Um, so uh, express shipment orders are usually going to take about five to ten days. Um, so wherever you're sending it from China will take about five to ten days usually. Uh, once it arrives there, they have it. Uh, let me read the question really quick. And then to the warehouse. Yeah, it kind of depends on your supply chain, and that's something we talk about a lot in the program. But um, most people are going to ship to an inspection center. So it'll go from your supplier, five to ten days, it'll arrive at your inspection center. Usually stay there for two or three days before it goes into the warehouse. So 
total, I would say anywhere from seven to fifteen days is probably average. Okay, cool. Other than that, uh, looks like we have a lot of thanks. Laura says thanks. Uh, Isaac, Brent. Adajama, uh, everybody seems to be liking it, and that looks like the end of our questions, my friend. So, I think uh, Jared, you were the last one with a question, my friend. Uh, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, we will we will wrap it up then. Once again, big pat on the back for those of you who have made it this far. Uh, we we have made it to the very end of the presentation. Uh, guys, you have everything you need here to jump in e-commerce empire and I will see you guys uh, again July 18th is going to be our first unlimited live training called together our GSD power hours so I look forward to seeing quite a few of you on that I know a lot of people have jumped in already um, guys if you have any other questions uh, you can contact us in several different ways you got our phone number our email uh, you also have the chat box on startupbros.com slash empire here this is the quickest way to chat with us um, and that's basically it. So, guys, once again, you got startupbros.com slash empire. Enter in all your info. The live 50 coupon code is going to secure 50% off the list price as well as redeem all those bonuses that we've talked about here today. Um, you can, you know, wrap up on everything you're going to get on the right here. This is all 90-day money-back guarantee. And um, I guess that's pretty much a wrap. Guys, the one thing, too, I know a lot of people here today are not going to be an e-commerce empire. That's fine. Completely understand, obviously. Um, what I'm going to stress to you guys, I do not want to see you go out there and end up on some other webinar. Like the last thing we want to do is go on another webinar about another business model. You guys have got to focus. We did an event recently in Tampa for a bunch of clients at my house um, where we talked about productivity and GSD, getting shit done. And um, what we found one study that said that uh, the average office worker today never in their entire life, they never have one hour of focus, unbroken focus and attention on one thing. Uh, if you are going to be an entrepreneur, you have got to train your focus, right? And you've got to understand that what you just did here today, guys, you might feel productive right now, but all you did was consume information for three hours, right? We have got to go out there and stop learning and start doing. You've got to take action to turn this knowledge into a tangible result for you in your business. So please, guys, whether it's in e-commerce empire, which I obviously think is the best way, the quickest way to do it, the right way to do it, uh, whether it's with me or not, though, uh, don't end up on some other webinar. I just gave you so much information. I gave you the whole freaking roadmap. And so go out there and take action on it. We've seen people make millions of dollars with just the free information before they jump in and become a client, right? So get out there and take action, guys. You've got to use this inspiration. You've got to leverage it to take action and create that transformative result that you're going for, that you're actually trying to get. So, uh, so that's what I want you to do now, guys. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be out for 4th of July. That is fine. Uh, the most badass among us will be skipping 4th of July and working on this. But, um, but, but work into your inspiration. If you're inspired right now, uh, again, either jump in e-commerce empire or get to work because – Next week, you won't be inspired. You've got to take action now while you still can. So once again, guys, you've got all the information you need if you want to jump into e-commerce empire. I think we got like five or six different people that have already jumped in. Let's see. Yeah, so look forward to working with Rena, Andrew, um, Anna, Fortune, which is an awesome name, Kenny, um, Suzeel, uh, McKay, Earl. Tons of people jumping in. Awesome stuff, guys. Well, I look forward to working with all of you. We are going to have an incredible time together over the next 90 days. I think you will be shocked and amazed at not only how far we can take your business and your income, but also you as an entrepreneur. As you've heard, I am I'm starchly for real entrepreneurship. Uh, I will not let you guys fall into a funk. I will not let you fall into the coaching trap. I will create self-reliant entrepreneurs out of all of us, uh, including myself, and that's what this program is all about, is getting the actual result we want and, uh, and, and doing it in our own way, self-reliantly. So, guys, that's it. I'm going to cut myself off now because I'll just continue ranting all night here. And um, all right, good stuff. So, guys, thanks again for being here. I do, uh, I do greatly appreciate it. Again, it's a crazy world these days. So anytime we get together, 
uh, it's it's rare. It's rare. So I really appreciate you being here. Truly, I do from the bottom of my heart. Hopefully, I have respected your time and given you a uh, extreme amount of value to take away from this session. And um, guys, I'm gonna obviously uh, tell you to jump into e-commerce empire. Uh, this is the quickest way to build this type of business. 90-day launch plan to have a full branded product line up and selling on Amazon. Uh, this is a real passive income product line is what we're going for. So I look forward to building those product lines with you guys, and I will see you guys in uh, in just a couple weeks here on our July 18th uh, training call. You guys are going to get unlimited live training calls, so we'll get to know each other quite a bit over the next few months. But uh, awesome stuff, guys. Thanks again for being here. Have a great 4th of July, and um, I'm finally going to turn off my webcam, open up my door here because it's like 95 degrees, and uh, awesome stuff. So I'll see you guys in the uh, community. Make sure after you jump in, you introduce yourself and everything. Uh, me and Steve will be in there. We'll say hi and everything. So uh, good stuff, guys, and thanks again for being here. Much love. Good night. Have a good, uh, good holiday as well.